My name is Nanao Nakajima. It's been six whole months since I left the city to come live on this deserted island. Yet, in that time... Hiya. Hey, what's up? I was up? worried you'd be late. I still feel like I don't fit in. This is an elite academy, exclusive to kids from around the world with paranormal talents. How's it hanging, Normie? Uh, you reading this stupid battle manga? If kids this awesome actually existed, they'd be superheroes. Here, I did your homework for you, Mogul. <laughs> no! What did I say, huh? I told you to call me Prince of Flames, dang it! Uh, my bad. Prince of Flames is what I meant. Bullying doesn't suit you. Nanao is a chosen one, just like the rest of us. I mean, talentless, schmalentless, right? Hey man, you wanna go? Mm, not now, thanks anyway. But as an ice wielder, there's no doubt the day will come when I'll have to fight you for supremacy someday. He's right about me. I don't have any cool powers. So, as you all know, you've been brought to this remote desert island in order to undergo very special training. What you learn here... will crush the enemies of humanity! Our adversaries presented themselves 50 years ago and hide amongst us. They pose a constant threat to the human race. I assume there's a reason he's so worked up today. If we're ever to stand a chance against these powerful forces, then your talents are needed. Nay, they are essential! Uh, so you've said. <laughs> come on, Teach, just bring in the newbie already. Okay, you can come in. I'm Kyoya, Onodera. Hold on, pal, is that all you've got? This is an elite class of superheroes after all. So tell me, what do you bring to the table? Is there some rule I have to share that with you? I think not. <laughs> this student's talent is still private, so don't waste your time trying. Even I don't know what it is. What is this guy's deal? A hundred bucks says he's killed a man. The greater a talented's ability, the more likely they'll hide it. So he must be crazy powerful. And we have another transfer this morning. I am late! <laughs> I ran all the way. <sighs> nice to meet you all. I'm Nana Hiragi. Oh, wow. The questions are written all over your faces. So let's get this out of the way. I can read minds. That's my thing. Although, I kind of suck at reading a room. Honor to join the class. Let's have you sit. <laughs> Sitting next to a cute girl like this. It makes me nervous I might do something dumb. Hey, Nakajima. Huh? Do the other kids really bully you every day? Sorry about that. I kind of heard you thinking about it, that's all. If I'm annoying you, please feel free to shove something in my mouth. Oh, that's right. You can read minds, can't you? But honestly, they don't bully me that hey, much. Hey, guess uh, what? Nanao's an enemy of humanity. Uh -huh. He's a talentless at this school. <laughs> Isn't that fishy? Everyone knows it's supposed to be for the talented only. But I thought enemies of humanity would look more like this. Oh, <laughs> no, that one's just the standard type. You learn here about the kinds that are huge like giants and the ones who look like people. <laughs> I rest my case. You're clearly talking about yourself. Go ahead and show us your true form, self-appointed leader. You're being awfully cocky for a wimp, don't you think? Hey, huh? cut it out. Can't you see you're hurting him? Besides... You're just using him as an excuse anyway. You only came over here so you could ask me out, didn't you? I say no! Uh, where'd you get that idea? I heard you think it. B but I totally wasn't thinking of asking you out. Uh, maybe his friends. Hey, by the way, why'd you call him such a weird name? Self-appointed leader? I see you've been doing your own research on those scary monsters. Not to mention, I can already tell how nice you are. 
Uh, you think I'm nice? Yeah, cause I heard you. You have a pet cat, right? Oh, yeah. I can't bring her into the dorms, but there's a stray cat I feed sometimes. You know what I think? <laughs> you and I should be friends. Also, what's the self-appointed leader thing? You two! Uh, sorry, sir. I was in chat mode. Goodness, Hiragi. Whenever you attended your last school, didn't they teach you proper classroom conduct? Your voice was too loud for a chat. Sorry, sir. You wanted to talk to us about selecting our class rep, right? Oh, right. What a joy that you can read minds. Don't use it on your midterms. Wait, a class rep is kind of a leader, right? Mm. Now then, do I have any volunteers? Look at this room, chock full of confidence. I can't wait to feel like that. <laughs> Hands down, frickin' losers. We're battling the enemies of humanity here. So obviously the one who gets the job should be the most powerful person in class. Facts, I fully concur. It's what one might call noblesse oblige. <laughs> He's yeah. smart, studious, Girls and nuts. sincere. And more importantly, he's nice. How about you have a seat, Normie? It's not Nanao's fault that he's boring. Fine, then. You tell me what kind of person's worthy of the job. I mean, come on, let's be real. Have any of you ever even seen an enemy of humanity, let alone fought one? No one has. Right, sir? Correct. Even I haven't seen one in person. See? Why shouldn't it be you? Why are you pushing this so hard? I don't even want it. Ah! Hiragi, read the room, okay? You can call me Nana. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fatty, pretty boy, and Nakajima. If you ask me, you three should just duke it out. Let's not call people Fatty. I'm surrounded by idiots. <laughs> Sounds like fun! I'm in! Well, if I must, I must. Hold on, I didn't... And now, we don't have to give you a handicap now, do we? Since birth, my upbringing has been different from anyone else I've known. But it wasn't happy. It's like I never learned how to make friends or make connections with other people. Always aim for the top. Since you're the dullest member of our family, this may be your only chance to shine for once. I will. I swear. Listen to me. This is crucial advice. Wherever you go, make others see you as a leader. I've come to defeat the enemies of humanity. I'll be your leader. I'll keep you all safe. <laughs> I'm not gonna fight. Uh, I could never beat them anyway. But you're their self-appointed leader. I don't know what you heard me think, but stop. This forest is so vibrant, don't you think? Why are you following me? <laughs> hey, I know. Would you mind giving me a little tour of the island? Everything's still so unfamiliar to me. Seriously, what's the deal with this girl? Wow, I didn't know this place was free too! Yeah, plus our tuition, the water and utilities at the dorm, everything's covered by the state. On top of that, we all get a small stipend too. Why the heck does she keep following me around? Uh? That's what you're thinking, right? Yeah, mostly. I mean... You're kind of weird, you know? Well, duh, I guess I'd better be weird to be chosen to come to a place like this. You ever scared? Life changed instantly with that red paper. You got one of those too? Mm. Six months ago. There was no time to process it. Home one day, here the next. Mm. What does your talent feel like exactly? I basically hear people's thoughts in their own voice. Mostly I can hear their quick fleeting thoughts, but if I really focus, I can dig up their innermost ones too. Wow, that's cool. I don't think it's so great. I used to have to commute to school every day on a completely packed train. 
It always sounded like every single passenger was yelling into their phone. What do you mean? I could hear them. All their inner monologues. It was so distracting, it drove me crazy. The truth is, I wasn't able to make a single friend. Uh. Let's go see the ocean! Hey, watch out, Nana. That rope is pretty old. By the way, Nakajima, I know that you're not talentless. Cause think about it, if you really were, they would have had no reason to bring you to this island. My talent isn't very noteworthy. Why won't you reveal it to the class, though? Oh, there are a lot of us that don't, as a precaution. What do you mean? Well, uh, the only ones capable of saving humanity are here, and this is a training ground for war. But now, the bad guys are here with us as well. They've infiltrated the island. If you believe the rumors, anyway. So you think it's a bad thing if they know about our powers? Of course, they're very intelligent. That's why I bet your abilities could be useful. Are you saying you think the enemies have come here so they can kill the heroes before they mature? Yeah, that's the rumor. But that's impossible! Nana! What are you doing in here? I've been investigating. And learning quite a bit. Thank you. You saved me. What happened? It felt kind of like I was being pushed by a strong gust of wind. Uh, uh, Everything happened uh, so fast. I'm kind of scared. Oh no. Do you think it was the enemy? I... <laughs> Sorry! Wanna head back? By the way, I really think you should be our class rep. Drop it. Why do you keep pushing that? Because your mind is the purest in the class. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. I've sensed a lot of arrogance from the others, probably because of the whole talented thing. But you're nothing like them. Tell me something, down deep in your heart, don't you want to lead them? It's why you're here, to hone your power so you can defeat any opponent. Stop calling me a leader. <laughs> You're not my father. <laughs> Sorry. Forget it. It's okay, but I'm here to defeat the enemies of humanity. And I'll do it, too. I'm gonna train hard so I can save the world. Good for you, I guess. Oh, I see. When it comes down to it, you idolize your father, don't you? Amazing. <laughs> you really can read my mind whether I want you to or not. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I can hear all of your sadness. But you don't understand me. Wait. On second thought, you probably do. Now I feel violated. What do you mean, violated? <laughs> the only reason I'm here is because my father forced me to. I needed his approval. I've never been leader material. That's why some of those kids like to make fun of me. But back by the ocean. You saved me from falling off the cliff. And that wasn't for your father's approval, right? You did it without thinking, didn't you? You don't know when to quit. Go away! <clears throat> Why did she have to storm in here and ruin everything? What? One of the kids at school forgot his lunch today. Is that so? Well, I have no doubt you offered to share your lunch with him, the way any good class rep would. Uh, yeah. Of course I did, Father. Good boy, Nanao. That's right. For your birthday this year... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Here to annoy me after school hours? This is the boys' dorm, you know. You left this in the cafeteria. I just happened to notice it on my way back. Uh, uh, I'm sorry if I keep uh, bugging you. Good night. Um, it's pretty late. Did she go out looking for this just for me?
So Nakajima's out of the running, huh? Oh. Yeah, it seems that way. I want a clean fight, boys. Don't overdo it. If we actually went all out, then this fight would be to the death, wouldn't it? Just the way I like it. How about we make this an old-fashioned punch-out? Oh. That means the first one to fall down loses. Now get to it, boys! Kick his ass! Look like this. What a joke. Dang it! Congratulations on being elected class rep! Son of a mother! No pun intended. Look at her. She didn't really care who ended up on top. Idiots! I'm one of the talented! Uh. And you subject me to weak slapping matches like this?! Don't freaking insult me! Ah! That may have been overkill! The truth is, I wasn't able to make a single friend. Aim for the top. Always. You will be a leader. Forget that! I don't care! Sorry, the watch. Before, I should have thanked you. Nakajima, how did you? I. I can neutralize other people's abilities. That's my talent. <laughs> so, so. You... Are you kidding me? That's awesome! Well, you saved us, Danelle. Nice for real. I knew I was right. You see, you're the only one who can bring the whole class together. It doesn't seem real. You were born for this. I think true leadership requires a lot more than being a good fighter. I owe you one, you know? For a long time, I was lying to myself. I'm afraid of my father. But you're right. I do idolize him. Nakajima, you'll be just like him. Call me Nanao. We're friends. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, to clarify, you have the ability to neutralize any power that's directed at you. Is that how it works? That's the gist. I don't think my talent extends to the psyche like yours does. Is that really all you can do? Hmm. Afraid so. I was pretty useless at home. When people are super talented, it's not unusual for them to miss seeing their own potential. And it's especially true with you. Now that you're around your own kind, though, I bet you'll finally start to bloom. Maybe I'll have to harness my talents so I'm useful when the fight comes. Is it possible you could neutralize things that touch your body, too? Hey, there's an idea. So if I decide I don't want you getting inside my mind, I should touch you? Okay. <laughs> No, sorry, I, I wasn't coming on to you. I, I meant, like, holding hands. <laughs> For the first time, it's gone. I can't hear your voice in my head. It's so surreal. I, I don't have to eavesdrop on your inner voice or try to talk back to it either. Poor thing. She's struggled too. Hey, <laughs> Nana. Do something for me? Try figuring out what I'm thinking now. Without using my talent? Mm hmm Can you guess? <laughs> yeah, I can. I'm so glad we're friends, Nana. But why? I don't understand. What's happening? Am I really about to die now? Well... Want to know how I sensed you were an outcast on the first day we met? 
You sat there pretending to read a book, but you weren't even turning the pages. It was abundantly clear that you cared how the class perceived you. What? What is she saying? I sense that you were kind, yes, because of the cat scratch on your neck. An expensive, oversized watch on your wrist, obviously a gift. Even though you keep it immaculate, you forgot it in the cafeteria. It seemed clear that you had mixed feelings about it. There was a rift between you and the gift giver. Simple to deduce it was your father. You yelled at me for getting in your head. Just like I wanted you to. What the hell? I, I thought you could read minds. It was a lie? A talentless human mixed in a school full of the talented. I mean, that's pretty suspicious, right? But... Why go to such extremes? Don't tell me. You're an enemy of humanity! Not true. You are the real enemies. You're the ones who deserve the name. Especially you. You were on track to become the enemy commander after all. Nothing personal. Sorry for triggering your past trauma. But I needed to know how far your talent goes. Some of your kind can shoot fireballs or teleport instantly. You're monsters with limitless capabilities. But will you die if pushed off a cliff? That question has been consuming my mind, so I decided to find out. For the sake of humanity, I'm asking you to die. Years ago, when the first enemy of humanity appeared, it destroyed a city, slaughtering as many as it could. But in truth, the creature was neither an alien nor a monster. It was simply human, corrupted by a paranormal talent. Soon after, children born with these talents slowly began to infest cities all over the world. These new beings, with their magic-like powers, seemed completely immune to humanity's laws and code of ethics. Terrible incidents escalated across the globe. As a conciliatory effort, nations the world over launched countermeasures to use these new beings in a military capacity and established a new police force of talenteds. However, this cooperative measure ended in failure. Some used their powers for personal gain. Others plotted revolution. They were determined to seize power from the scientists who consistently treated them as lab rats rather than citizens. After five years of bloodshed, humanity won the war. But as the decades passed, the people's way of thinking began to change. Today, nations openly accept the existence of the talented, although they keep them separate, isolated in so-called national training academies. The youngsters in these academies train daily to fight the enemies of humanity, or rather, that is what the vast majority of people around the world have been led to believe. Nana Hiragi. Covertly kill the enemies of humanity on that island. This mission is top secret, and if you fail, you'll be punished accordingly. Do you accept? If the island's secret is exposed and the talented collude against us, our nation and the world with it will fall. The talentless will be ruled by the talented. In other words, humanity will meet its end. You must kill them all. You must kill them all. You must, you kill, must, you must kill, kill them all. Hey, Nana! Oh, hey, Mogolo. Have you seen Nanao? After so much big talk about being our leader, he actually had the nerve to ditch? You know, I gotta admit, I'm kinda surprised he turned out to be so badass. Weird. You think something might have happened to him? I can't do it. I just can't. Come on, you'll be fine. Give me a break. Get up, Michiru. Training for battles on the waterfront. You guys have got to take this seriously. The pond is deep. There can't be any messing around. Dude, you know I can't swim. Jeez. Child's play. Why must we train like this, sir? It's a waste. Did you have to go and freeze the pond? When will this melt? <sighs> I don't know. Like three or four days, maybe? This pond is supposedly five meters deep. And yet, he defied the laws of physics, freezing it solid. 
So much for training. It's not necessary, sir. Didn't you see my little demo? The enemies of humanity are mere worms in the face of my talent. In other words, it is the talented who are the true threat. Son of a it's like giving army tanks to toddlers. Anybody who attains superpowers through no effort of their own will become proud and arrogant without fail. Give a man a gun and he'll want to shoot it. If we allow underdeveloped humans to have that kind of power, can the world survive peace. for peace? The committee was right about them. Here, Agi. Could you break this up? <laughs> sure. If humanity is ever to have peace, I must kill them all. Hey, Sayakori. So tell me about your power. Can you seriously freeze anything? That's right. So, like, could you freeze this desk? Yeah, easy. Stop me out for real? Could you even freeze me if you wanted to? Hmm. Maiden, if that was your wish, you'd better believe I could. I would freeze you and preserve your beauty for all eternity. That was a lie. Lying makes people nervous, and that anxiety often manifests as movement. I don't get it. Why didn't you just freeze Mogul's whole body the other day, then? <sighs> well, that was, uh... because it wouldn't have been fair. I don't think he could be any easier to read. Oh, of course. So I can assume he doesn't have the power to freeze people. Good. By the way, do you think Nakajima is sick? Mm -hmm. Absent the very day after he's voted class rep seems disqualifying to me, no? The class still thinks Nakajima is taking a sick day. I have to strike again before things escalate. Try it again! I dare you! The now the leader of the class, huh? Gee, yeah, had no! It's been a constant bloodbath all day with this lot. I'm the boss here, you freaking beta! <laughs> oh! Uh, still fighting over who's leader? Who even cares about that crap, you losers? <sighs> Shibusawa! Listen, Mokuo. Uh, you know what my talent is, don't you? Yeah, you do something with time, right? You already know there are two types of people I hate. I cannot abide slow eaters and loud eaters make my skin crawl. Oh yeah, I knew that. It's because you're so strong and brave. <laughs> oh. So glad you understand. Come along, friend. He manipulates time? <clears throat> Interesting. Rumor has it his talent is altering time. Well, Speaking of bosses, what happened to Nakajima? Just beats me. The other day. <laughs> you know, I hate to admit this, but he just might be the most powerful student here. Shibasawa! Good lunch. I think I'll join ya. Listen, Hiragi. Sorry, but I can't stand being around loud eaters. You're a pretty loud eater yourself, mister. What is it you want? Well, I guess I'm just fangirling because I heard you're the strongest kid here. You think I'm the strongest? Please, I'm bullied just as hard as Nakajima. You saw that jerk almost throw me into the pond this morning. Oh, man, Pickles! Do you mind if I have one? <laughs> uh, did you just... That's my talent. I can stop time. Please don't tell anyone, okay? But stopping time isn't really all there is to your talent. Isn't that true? I'm a blabbermouth, you know. Are you sure I can't tell everyone what your talent really is? Hmm. Well, you're right. My talent isn't exactly stopping time. What I do is return to the past. I can go back in time and change an entire course of events if I want. You're the first person here to see through me. So I guess that means it's true. You really can read people's minds, can't you? Yay, I got it right! His explanation is oversimplified, but it checks out. I clearly saw the cup of water fall off the table. There's no doubt about that. But look at his clothes on the floor. There's not a drop anywhere. If Shibusawa's talent was to be able to literally stop time and move around freely during the time freeze, 
It's very doubtful that he could scoop all the fallen water out of midair. Another thing. When Shibasawa used his talent in class, giving Moguo a good punch made all the sense in the world. But there was no reason for him to straighten that other kid's tie. In other words, Shibasawa didn't stop time. He traveled to the moment before the cup fell, he stopped it from toppling over, and then he created a new timeline where it didn't fall. With Moguo, he traveled to the moment before he punched his lackey, and then punched Moguo instead. Simple. I'm impressed by you, Nanahiragi! Uh -huh. We are kindred spirits, you and I! Let's correct this unfair world together! Uh -huh. The world is rotten and it's rampant with poverty and prejudice. However, using my talent to change the past, I believe I have the power to exorcise the evils from this planet! Does it ever freak you out that you could screw up our future with one wrong move? No, because I never screw up. And because I can alter the past, I'm the only true champion of justice in this sad, pathetic present. Oh, okay. This guy's not just super talented, he's super deluded too. <clears throat> I can't stand people who leave behind even a single grain of rice, so please take note. I'll keep it in mind, thanks. What an annoying turn of events. If he were to travel back in time and witness certain actions I've taken up to this point... Nakajima's gone. Could you use your power to investigate that? Wait, how'd you...? No need to worry. I don't gossip about people's talents. Even if you did blow my cover, I'd still be out of everyone's league. What do you mean Nakajima is gone? I thought he was just taking a sick day. Then why didn't he contact our teacher? Maybe he's in bed, sleeping. That's doubtful, seeing as he never even came home last night. Nakajima's room is right next to mine. Those walls are thin, but I never heard a single peep from his place. When he didn't show up for class, I went back to the dorm and knocked on his door. There was no answer. You're Hiragi, aren't you? It seemed like you and Nakajima really hit it off. We did. And then yesterday, you two went off somewhere together. Uh-huh. Where did you go? And what did you do? Answer me. You might be the last person who saw Nakajima before he went missing. Well, let me think. I congratulated him on class rep. That's all I remember. Hmm, how did he react to that? Pretty normally. It was like his worries were over. He was excited to fight the enemies of humanity. After that, did you walk back to the dorms together? Is he trying to get me to slip up? Or is he using his talent to dig for the truth? Um, Onodera? Call me Kyoya. Oh, and you can call me Nana. But, uh, can I ask why you're playing with my hair? Sorry, but I just have to touch it. My little sis has these, too. Really? You have to? Wait, your sister? For whatever reason, I feel compelled to grab it. He's gone full Sherlock. Correct me if I'm wrong, but now you're thinking something must have happened to Nakajima? Well, I mean, he is missing. I need to take control of the narrative here. Wait, do you think he's like an enemy of humanity? I do recall those kinds of rumors floating around. Yeah, I've heard the enemy is plotting to crush us before we hone our talents. In fact, I've even heard they've already infiltrated our ranks, disguised as humans. <laughs> disguised as humans. <laughs> you okay? What's wrong? It can't be. Kyoya, no way. That's nuts. What is it? I heard something strange. I can always hear people's inner voices, but this was different. What are you playing at? Kyoya, I did wonder why you were absent this morning. I guess you really care about Nakajima. It's just kind of surprising since you were so standoffish from the start. Come on. I was curious after all that hype yesterday about him being the leader. Is that really it? Are you getting any clues from reading his thoughts? She's right, you know. Why do you suddenly care so much? <sighs> I was just trying to make new friends, that's all. Do you really suspect that he might be the enemy in disguise? Well, I could... 
not be mistaken, but I heard an unfamiliar voice from his mind, and it scared me. Guess we'll have to be vigilant around him. Good. That should get him off my back for a while. But I'm guessing you must have some personal interest in what happened to Nakajima. I do. Okay, then let's go look into it. You'll help me? Of course. Listen, any friend of yours is a friend of mine. We'll find him together. Uh, great! I'm gonna go check out the past. How did it go? He was right. Kyoya said he never came back home, and now I verified that. Hey, are you okay? I guess time travel really takes it out of yeah. you, huh? It used to be worse. I worked out to build stamina. He must have some other limitations, too. Otherwise, he would have been able to unmask me as Nakajima's murderer by now. Do you have to meditate? To travel to the same location in the past? Yeah. That means I can't kill him in any way that he could fight back. Because then, all he'd have to do is take a return trip to the past and kill me first. How far back in time can you travel? About a day at the most. The further I go back, the more fatigued I get, so I have to be pretty careful. If I go back more than 12 hours, I've been known to vomit when I return to the present. But why? I don't get it. Why wasn't he able to follow Nakajima's every move when he went to the past? It doesn't make sense. Shouldn't he have seen what happened to him? I'll go check again. Someone saw me the last time, so I had to bug out. Someone saw him? <sighs> so, did you learn anything? Hiragi, yesterday afternoon, you and Nakajima went to the cliffs after school, didn't you? Yeah, sure. What about it? Nothing. Yet. I'm about to go follow you guys. <sighs> What happened was, Nakajima and I went to hang out by the water to celebrate, then we went our separate ways. Yeah, although Nakajima didn't return to the dorm afterwards, there's no doubt about that now. This is bad. Hiragi, you can read people's minds whenever you want, can't you? It kinda comes and goes. Well, maybe that's why you spotted me. So wait, if someone in the past sees you, then you get zapped back to the future? In certain cases. If our eyes meet in lock, I can't stay. Oh, I guess that means if you wanted to change the past, it wouldn't be easy to do. But still, I'm in danger. Why don't we pick this up tomorrow? No. Try as I might, 24 hours is my hard limit. Which means, the longer we wait, the further we'll be from the truth. Are you sure? I must do what I can for justice. Besides, aren't you a little worried? Your new friend has gone missing. Uh... Despite your smiles, you must be shaking with fear inside. By the way, do you remember what time it was when you two went to the cliffs? Something wrong? What happened there? Did something go on between you that you don't want me to see? I think it was around 6 p.m. when we took a walk. I hope you understand I'm not doing this because I suspect you. Oh, I know that. Go ahead. Do your thing. I'll be back. Don't let me down past self. <sighs> well, did you see anything? I saw... that you two really are close. You were even holding hands. <laughs> then right after that, you noticed me and our eyes met for a second. And now, here I am. I was actually hiding in those bushes. Right over there. That's so crazy. He's right. My memories just got overwritten. At that moment, all my senses were hyper-focused. I noticed him there. I waited to make sure he was gone. Then, I killed Nakajima. I have a mission. If I slip up and allow anyone to witness my crusade in action, then I won't be able to survive in this nest of monsters. That I know. I have to admit it, I was a little relieved. I hope you'll be able to forgive me for doubting you. No worries! That whole, the new kid is an enemy of humanity thing, it's not far-fetched. I'm sad to say it, but I think it's time to call it a day. Sure! Thanks for your help. You've been a true friend. Ugh. 
I don't get it. Why did you keep that from me? I'm so sorry. I wasn't sure I could trust you. That's all. Well, I guess I get that. I felt the same way. It was over there! That's where Nakajima was attacked by an enemy of humanity! Okay, what happened? After we held hands at the cliffs, this monster suddenly appeared out of nowhere and chased us into the forest. And then... the enemy... It ate Nakajima, and it left nothing behind! <gasps> I was so scared I couldn't do anything. But... You can go back and change it, can't you? You can use your amazing talent to save Nakajima, right? In the past, right where you're standing right now, Nakajima's being eaten alive! Can you show up there and warn us? Maybe call out to us so we can change Nakajima's fate? We're running out of time! Please help him! I understand. And I promise I'll do whatever I can. I'll be back in no time at all, with your missing friend in tow. At this time last night, the pond wasn't frozen. Shibasawa can't swim, and on top of that, he's always winded when he time travels. I can only assume he drowned, and no one noticed his body, so the pond solidified over him, just as it did this morning. It's that time of year. I've eliminated two enemies in a row, but... Okay. Seriously, where the hell is Nanao at? It looks like Shibusawa's out too. It's important for me to proceed with caution. If they discover there's a killer in their midst, it'll be harder to plan my next move. For real though, dude. It's weird that they're both out. Oh. Kyoya Onodera? Mr. Mysterious Transfer? There's that rumor that there's an enemy of humanity among us. Just saying. Hey. What's my reading today, huh? Go ahead, try to guess what I'm thinking right now. <gasps> well, let me see. At this point, all I can really say to you is... I don't know. If you I mean, care at all about your girlfriend over I there, I'd suggest not holding you. another girl up against a wall. <laughs> But how did you know we were dating? Dang, you rock, Nana! Once again, as I said, I can read... Well, it's been pouring all morning. Yet it looks like only your right side is soaked. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, if you'll notice, only her left side is wet. If I had uh -huh. to guess, I'd say you walked here under an umbrella together. <laughs> Just a theory. Oh, great. This guy. Seaweed! Do you maybe want to eat lunch with me? I'm not hungry. Nobody uses this janitor shed. It's warm. Does he come all the way out here to feed this cat heated milk? He seems so doom and gloom. There must be more going on beneath the surface. Hey, Gyoya? to tell you something. You've got seaweed stuck to your head. Hmm? 
Oh, thanks. That was pretty sloppy of me. Hey, hold on. Are you free today, kid? So, I'm a kid? I'd really like us to be friends, Nana. <laughs> What's this deal? Come on in. You sure it's okay? Cut the polite crap. <laughs> this is perfect. A look at his face will give me a glimpse into his mind. <laughs> What's up with this room? Hmm? A video game? Not your thing? N no, it just took me by surprise. Plus, this game is pretty old school. Sorry about that. I prefer retro games. <laughs> this is what friends do. I thought it'd be fun. Thanks. I'm honored you play with me. There's a doll on that bookshelf. If you'd rather play with her, that's cool too, if you want. No thanks, I'm good. So, uh, didn't you bring me here to talk about something specific? You're pretty popular for somebody who just transferred. Uh, and I find that very impressive. You think I'm popular? More like I'm desperate to make new friends. Yeah, I could really use a few of those. How should I go about making some? Uh, well, most people bond over their similarities, like common interests, or even common weaknesses. Oh, similarities, huh? All my life, I've been told I'm unapproachable. Would you agree? Uh, I guess you're a little scary. You're kind of like a low-key F-boy or something. Huh? <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm an F-boy? It's just... I mean, come on! Most normal guys don't force girls into their room! No. I literally do not know what F-boy means. Huh? Can you give me a definition? How should I put it? It's a guy who is like overbearing but detached, or giving off dumb vibes, or is cocky around girls. Oh, never heard that. A new term. Gotta write that down. Hmm. I don't get him. What's his deal? I easily uh, obsess over things that pique my curiosity. Oh, I see. So is that why you're investigating Nanao's disappearance? It's what I'm most curious about, yes. Do you mind if I ask why, though? That's what I'm curious about. Well, I have a little sister. Though she's younger, she came to the island before I did. So your little sister has superpowers, too? That's right, and I haven't heard from her in a while. In fact, ever since she came to this school for her training, she's been missing. I came here hoping against all hope to find some answers. And then immediately, out of the blue, Nakajima went missing. I think it's apparent the school isn't even serious about finding him. The faculty must be dealing with it, right? We talented are the future, aren't we all national treasures? I always envisioned this island as some sort of boot camp, but at the end of the day, they aren't actually training us at all. The only thing they've managed to do is let us run wild. Even with our powers, are we really fit to fight against the enemies of humanity? That manga! It's pretty old. Have you heard of it? Yes! It's only my favorite manga! Huh. I spy a similarity. That manga's heroine has always been a personal hero of mine! Queen of Justice! Being a bad guy, saving the day! I get it. And I've always loved how she has a secret dark side, too. It's really tragic how she has to kill her friends. But they do turn out to be her enemies in the end. She'll do anything for her mission! She's the only one who has the grit to do it! Wow, this is so cool! I can't believe you are also a fan! Because... Because... Now I can kill you without hesitation. Guess I'll do my best to stop being an F-boy. <laughs> See ya. By the way, something else has piqued my curiosity. <gasps> Crap, that's Nakajima's watch. 
ring a bell for you? No. How the heck did he get that watch? Sorry to pull another F-boy move. But come with me. Hey, uh... Hmm? What's that you're doing there? Huh? Oh. It's just a nervous habit. I have to fidget with something when I'm thinking. I especially like silky things. Huh. <laughs> so, um, would you mind... I got a chance! Sorry. By the way, kid, what were you doing on the evening of the 13th? The 13th? Yes. It's the day after we transferred here. Nakajima's been absent from school since the 14th. That being the case, the 13th is most likely the day that Nakajima went missing. Oh, that's easy. Like I said, I was hanging out with Nakajima. But why'd you ask about evening? Not having any friends means I've spent basically all my spare time exploring this island. And recently, I happened to come across this broken piece of safety rope. Then I found the watch on the rocks below. It's not Kojima's. It suddenly struck me that it's a pricey piece, for a kid anyway. Talk about observant. The watch was broken, no question, but I noticed that the hands had stopped at approximately 6.10. It occurred to me that if it was 6.10 p.m. rather than 6.10 a.m., you might know something about it. Makes sense, but I don't. I wish I could help, but Nakajima and I parted ways. I left him here. But I feel sure that it couldn't have been suicide. What makes you say that? When he protected everyone from Don Mogo's flames that day, he was so alive. He also might have left the watch behind as a Hail Mary play. It's possible he may have dropped it right as he was being pushed off the cliff. Just a theory. What makes you think that? Well, it's a nice watch. Very likely a gift from a loved one. Maybe he hoped it would be clear to people that if they found it, it meant that the worst had happened. That makes sense. Could be an enemy of humanity. I think so too. There's no way they aren't already on the island. If the textbooks are right, they have big, terrible fangs. So then the question becomes, why would they feel they had to push him off a cliff like they were hiding the body or something? Well, remember, they're also rumored to be very intelligent. Yeah, but it's all guesswork, meaning no real research has been done. And yet, our government has set up this training academy. Great. He's a hundred times more dangerous than Nakajima. I'm seriously considering telling the school officials about my theories on this. What do you think? Couldn't that cause a panic, though? Yeah. There's also no guarantee they'd believe me. So I thought it'd be smart to ask the popular kid for help. Wait a minute. Are you saying that that's the real reason you suddenly wanted to be my friend? Don't get so defensive. I would like to be your friend. Then, as a token of your goodwill, tell me this. What's your talent and why is it secret? Well, my talent isn't anything special. Come on, please? What's the deal? I thought you could read minds or something, kid. So what's stopping you from reading mine? <sighs> He's suspicious of me. Of course I'm not suspicious of you or anything. You don't seem to have any motive for killing Nakajima. Hey, don't even talk like that. You're scaring me. In any case, I just wanted to let you know as my new friend that it looks like there's a monster loose on this island. Thanks. You're already good at this friend stuff, see? I've successfully infiltrated the island. But as for the enemy's abilities... If I could discover their various powers, my mission would be much easier. Records are made when they are recruited to the Academy. There's a large database where they're stored and organized for reference. Using that data, we can attempt to infer and quantify their potential threat on humanity. But don't get excited. 
Their powers can't always be pinned down. Some of their abilities even continue to evolve throughout puberty. Once when we tried to eliminate a talented who could control microorganisms within their body, a deadly virus was unleashed into the atmosphere. In the end, we had to raise the entire city with a vacuum bomb. There was even a movement at one point seeking to expose us for rounding them up to be executed. After years of research, it was concluded that sending in agents like you was our best shot for accurate intel. Using your own eyes, determine the extent of their powers. He was obviously able to climb down to find that watch. So that means he must have some kind of superhuman physical prowess. But in the case of most talented, there are certain limitations to their powers. Like some become heavily fatigued after using theirs. Or being able to freeze objects, but not necessarily people. Tomorrow, I'll set my trap. Get ready for your talent to be unmasked. Uh, Nakajima was attacked by an enemy of humanity? Yes, unfortunately. This watch is all that remains. Might be time to contact his parents. But wait just a minute here. You may have forgotten since orientation, but there's absolutely no outside communication till you graduate. Then what do you suggest we do, sir? Let me think. I don't know. <sighs> well then, I guess it's safe to say we shouldn't tell the others just yet. Of course not. That would only cause a lot of confusion. Crap, what should we do? Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry, I'll consult with the higher-ups. It's clear that the faculty is completely incompetent. Looks like the staff here won't be much help. Poor Nakajima. Speaking of Nakajima, I hope that cat is okay. What cat? Oh, he'd been feeding a stray cat ever since he got here. Not that I've ever seen it or anything. I just hope it isn't too hungry. Where is it? Oh! You know what? I need to go to the restroom. See you after school. This girl is seriously spacey. Her friend is most likely dead, but she doesn't look upset in the slightest, unless it's a facade. This island, something's off about it. No real training happening. Students on their own. Outside communications prohibited. And these so-called enemies, do they even exist? First, my sister disappears. Now Nakajima is dead. Someone on this island obviously has nefarious intentions. No kitty, I guess. Well, I can set it out for later. <laughs> Nobody knows the silent secret. That all the talented here are sitting ducks, simply awaiting their turn to be killed by the talentless. Therefore, if anyone tries to uncover the truth, or begins to sense that something is amiss, they must be disposed of ASAP. Luckily for me, I currently have a clear advantage. Even if students are murdered, no one would ever suspect me of being involved. I'll admit, it is possible that a monster has infiltrated the island in order to eliminate us. However, if our enemy's design is murder, then luckily, I'm at a clear advantage. His bedroom was a complete mess. So it's interesting that his bathroom was spotless. He doubled his trash bags, which led me to believe he was concerned about odor. The tomatoes on his desk even had sticky notes with expiration dates on them. Most likely, because he wouldn't be able to tell by sight that they'd gone bad. In other words, Kyoya's senses seemed to be off. I thought I left the window open yesterday. He 
probably wouldn't even notice if a room was saturated in gas. Now show me. What's your talent? Yoya! He's not moving. His talent is the physical kind. So I was expecting him to break through a wall or a window before the flames spread and caused him any serious harm. Don't you move! I'll go get water and some help! <laughs> Tell me, why are you the first one here? Uh, he's healed? How did you know I was the one caught in the flames? Explain that! <laughs> Sorry, I was a little upset. But now I'm curious. Oh, yeah, that's okay. You're my friend, after all. Maybe you just read my mind from a distance and came running. I could buy that kid. And maybe when you seemed to randomly bring up the cat, it wasn't because you already knew I was feeding it during our lunch breaks. Could have been a coincidence. But then, why do you look like you're utterly shocked right now? You can read my mind, yet you had no idea. You didn't know. My talent makes me invincible. Since we're friends, I'll let you in on a secret. I can't smell anything, but it has nothing to do with my powers. Just born this way. Invincibility comes at a price. I'll envision my weakness clearly right now. So that you, mind reader, can be privy to my secret. I received the message. Thanks for telling me. I'm so glad we became friends. I will unmask you. Well, this is a twist. He survived. Immortal, huh? This is my fault for failing to unmask his talent. It is strange. First Nakajima disappears, and now Shibusawa's missing too. Maybe the enemy huh? killed them, just like they were obviously trying to kill me. Don't start with that stuff! Are you one of those lame dorks peddling the conspiracy theories about the bad guys being here? Take it down a notch, friend. That said, it would be a good idea to go ahead and choose a new leader. Leader, eh? Kyoya knows someone tried to kill him, so he's not going to shut up about it until people actually listen. I don't think he'll be able to hide Nakajima's and Shibasawa's deaths much longer. Hiragi, can you try to knock some sense into these fools? Kyoya is my biggest obstacle. Before I can kill again, I'm gonna need to throw him off my scent. <laughs> that is so freaking awesome! <laughs> Michiru just got a love letter in her locker, you guys! Oh. Let's see, what does it say? Michiru, I love you. We're not in the same class, so for a whole year I had to cling to the only comfort I had, which was watching you walk by the garden every morning. But today, I'm finally ready to tell you how I feel. Are you free after school? These idiots. I'll wait for you after the bell. Let's meet up next to the garden. <laughs> Sorry, that's my bad. I mean, we're just so happy for you. Aw, look how <laughs> precious baby is blushing. Uh -huh. What's her deal? Hey, Hiragi, your leg. Uh -huh. Right, bad. I kind of slipped and fell yesterday. Better pace yourself, though. Everybody knows using your talent shortens your lifespan. You're Michiru Inukai, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for your help. And your talent is lovely. Michiru Inukai, potential kill count? 
a hundred and fifty thousand plus. I'd assume she was harmless since she's a healer, but I guess it just goes to show. A monster is a monster. No mistaking it. Her healing power will hinder my ability to kill. Huh? What's up? Nothing. See you around. I was just on my way to go feed the cat. Great. He's stalking me. Hey, Michiru! Oh, Nana! You waiting for the one who wrote that love letter? Well, maybe. Look, I'm sorry, but they're not coming. Now! You're embarrassing yourselves! Ah! Oh crap, that's right, I totally forgot she can read minds! Damn you, Hiragi, you dick! You pay for this! You mean... Oh yeah, they were definitely just messing with you, Michiru. But like, how did you know that? To put it simply, I've been overhearing some really nasty inner monologues all morning. I'm sorry. I can read minds, not hearts. No! Thank you, Nana. For real. Well, I should be thanking you for healing my leg. Hey, are you free right now? Would you like to have lunch with me? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to! <laughs> I thought she'd never stop talking. She's a dog personified. Her power is simple too. She licks a wound to heal it. She can fix torn skin and muscles, even stop internal bleeding. Quite an impressive variety of injuries she can mend. She can heal her own wounds too, which is impressive, but only if her tongue can reach them. Which means I'll have to aim for the back. Yo. <laughs> Doing out here? I was worried about you, kid. Just guarding you from an enemy attack. I appreciate it, but it's getting a little late. I won't die from lack of sleep. Sure, but this is the girls' dorm, you know? You girls are like kid sisters to me, so it's no big deal. Don't worry, I won't act inappropriately. In fact, want to sleep together? I could sing you a nice lullaby. Thanks, but no. I always listen to music while I sleep. Where was she trying to go at this hour of night? Why does she have the music so loud? Is it so I won't be able to hear her? Is she gonna try to sneak out the window? What is she up to now? surrounded by mayhem. I've noticed her buzzing around Michiru all evening. So friendly. Just like she was with Nakajima. The same tactics. Why? Is it to take her target's guard down? What's her motive? She makes no sense. On the other hand, if the enemies of humanity don't really exist, then Hidagi is the most suspicious of all.
When I stepped outside, I heard some monsters say they were going to kill Michiru. I just... I had to do something. She was right. She shielded me, and then the enemy... Where did it go? I don't know. I think it was the invisible type. You know, from our textbook? <laughs> Is it possible I was overthinking things? <gasps> Why's Hiragi on the floor? Are you okay? All right, think hard. Why did I cause this big ruckus in the first place? By spilling blood here in front of my classmates, how will that change the dynamic going forward? You've obviously suspected I'm a murderer. To prove you wrong, I've disguised myself as a victim of attempted homicide. I realize that continuing to hide both Nakajima's death and Kyoya's near death would end up being far too difficult as time went on. So I decided to use the paranoia that the enemies of humanity are among us and turn rumor into reality. It was quite simple. I stabbed myself in the back to make it more realistic. All that remained was to let Dog Girl come along and save me. Now I will become their leader. I'm gonna dominate this school. Sorry, but something still isn't adding up. Can I ask you again? He's been completely obsessed since yesterday. Take your time. You overheard an enemy of humanity's inner voice? So you jumped out the window to check it out? Yes. And then... I heard the inner voice say that it was going to kill Michiru. I was right there, though. Why didn't you come to me for help? I'm immune to enemy attacks. Since I can't die, I'd make the perfect ally. I'm sorry. I guess I was just so frazzled. I just had to go save her. Did you say you can't die? Yeah, but it only applies to me. I can't save other people's lives like you can, kid. <sighs> so then, the story is Hiragi ran into Inukai's room, and then she was stabbed from behind? Yes. My theory is that the enemy must have slipped into Michiru's room through the window. But you still didn't see it, right? <laughs> what a weird story. What do you think the enemy wanted anyway? Uh, if the textbooks are right, maybe it snuck in to eat me or something? But why were you the target in the first place? And also, if it had invisibility and stealth on its side, then why would it retreat just because a few of us ran up to it? My guess is, it could have killed everyone at the scene without very much effort at all. Sorry, but I heard a bit of your inner voice just now. Are you theorizing that there never was an enemy of humanity at the scene, and it was something else altogether? Let's assume there wasn't one there. Hiragi and Inukai were the only ones present at the scene. Hiragi was stabbed in the back. That's a fact. It wouldn't make sense for Inukai to stab and then heal her. Which means... There was either a third person in the room, or Hidagi stabbed herself. It's futile, Kyoya. <clears throat> but I can't come up with any good reason why Hidagi would stab herself. I don't know why she'd kill me or Nakajima either. Maybe there really is some invisible enemy. That's starting to seem more feasible. I'm afraid any attempt to decipher my motives will lead you straight to a dead end, kid. Nana! You were attacked by an enemy of humanity? Damn, we just heard! Are you okay? So the enemy really is among us. What's going to happen now? Don't let the fear control you, peons! Put your faith in me, your leader! Yeah! Now let's not get too hasty. I was just thinking it was time we chose a new class rep. <laughs> oh, like you, I guess! Go ahead and fight me!
mind if it's her. At least she's cute. A smart move. It helped to have a leader who can read the enemy's minds. No one else here has that kind of ability. Nana's super brave and very kind. I love her. I feel sure she'll keep her class safe. Okay, so Nana's our rep now. Done! I have no objections. What do you think, Nana? Very well. I'll be your leader. Let's all work together to defeat the enemies of humanity! Yeah! <laughs> hey, since we have a few days off, would you mind doing me a favor and asking everyone in class about their gifts and abilities, and then writing down everything you learn in here? I'd like to make a record in case we ever need it. <laughs> I'll get right on this, leader! <laughs> Amazing progress. Now I can make enemies of humanity appear and disappear at my own discretion. And any time I kill someone, I can say they died a hero's death. Hiragi, mm? sorry I suspected you. It's now clear that you were a victim the whole time. <laughs> what did you suspect me of? From your tone, I sense you still suspect me. By the way, is your back feeling better now? Yes. From what I saw, it looked like you were stabbed with something sharp. Like what exactly? Like a harpoon or a screwdriver, or maybe even a gimlet. Uh... Hmm? Sorry. I geek out over weapons. Ah, now I get it. I just assumed it was just some typical pointy thing like claws or a spear. We're gonna need some countermeasures. It's up to you, leader. Trying to call my bluff? That all you've got left? Gloating aside, a gimlet does stand out too much as a weapon. If I keep using it, people may eventually start to wonder why, despite its strong physique, an enemy of humanity would even need to use a human tool like that. I should probably switch to magic methods. A screwdriver or a gimlet could easily be concealed under someone's clothing. Hidagi stabbed herself. She knew that Inukai would save her. She did it so she could play the victim and take control of the class. Now she'll kill us all, one by one. <clears throat> it's no use. This is all still a bunch of guesswork on my part. I have no proof, much less a motive. Not to mention, no one will believe me if I tell them their class rep is a serial killer. Maybe everyone else is right. Maybe the enemies of humanity really do exist. Kyoya won't die, no matter what I do. But I wonder how poison would affect him. Well, the class is mine at any rate. As long as no one witnesses my murders, they'll have no reason not to trust me. Hey, Miss Class Rep! I need to talk to you. Do you have a sec? Oh, right. Let me see. You're Sunekichi Hatadaira, right? What's up? So, like, Michiru swung by and asked me what my talent was, right? So then, you know, I was like, I can see the future or whatever. No biggie. <laughs> he can see the future? So, like... What's this all about? Kinda weird the enemy of humanity isn't trying to kill me. Instead, our new leader's got a rope around my neck. <laughs> Does that photograph show our future? For real? Yeah. Insane, right? So he's a psychic photographer? This is strange. It kinda looks like we're in the PE supply shed. Your watch is pointing right at 10 o'clock. Do you think that means I'm going to try to kill you at 10 p.m.? Well, I was honestly hoping you could enlighten me here. But I can't! I have no clue what this is all about, so please believe me! There's no way I can explain it! Why don't you come with me? I'm hungry. Uh -huh. Come on! Open up, hey, damn it! Hey, cool! It's after hours, you know! 
That means the cafeteria is staffed for off the clock now. Shut up. I can see the future. I'm legit. Unlike the rest of those useless party magicians in class. Special treatment, please. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. What the hell? Who is this savage? Give me a char shoe bowl. For you, babe? I'll have Zara Soba, please. Okay, let's talk about this photograph. Yeah, so like, I used to be this big time nerd, you know? Excuse me? And like, you know that super important test that decides your future? I had a crazy vision where I got a zero on it. Uh, I see. I tried though, you know? I studied like a madman for that. You mean, you studied hard so your premonition wouldn't come true? That's right, and what do you think happened? It's so beyond insane. Let me see. You got a fever on test day or something? Is that it? Holy freaking crap, so you really can read minds! That's crazy! Nah, it's just a pretty common occurrence. No matter how hard you try, you can't change the future. Fate is freaking insane, isn't it? That's my official life mantra. What an imbecile. Oh, here, check this out. I took this photo a while ago, too. Oh, man, I was right! See that angle? This is totally happening today. So what you're saying is, according to fate, I'm about to wear the soba I just ordered on my head? You think I'm lying, don't you? Uh, excuse me, could I please have Katsudan instead? Huh? Yeah, fine, I can do that. Nice try, sweetie. Oh, I'm sorry. I just cleaned the floor, so I'm afraid it's still a bit wet. <laughs> See what I mean, Nana? It's pointless, babe. Once it's in one of my photos, it's definitely happening. So then, what exactly do you suggest we do now? Let's talk about you. Why do you want to kill me anyway? Again, there must be some mistake. But you killed Nakajima, right? Check it out. I snapped these pics the same day you transferred here. Ain't they something? Now I know what he wants out of this. And it's obvious why he didn't share these photos with everyone else to expose me. Now hang on! I can't believe our brand new leader's a freaking serial killer! No! Please hear me out! Give me a chance to clear my name! I don't want to scare the rest of our classmates with these crazy photos! Please don't show them! I'll do anything! <laughs> oh yeah? You'll do anything I ask? As I figured, he wants to use these incriminating pictures to blackmail me. <sighs> the stupid island is just so boring. It's likely that he has no friends. Even if he tried to expose Nakajima's murder, no one would believe him. It's funny, like, how no enemies of humanity have shown up in my photos. It makes me wonder what the hell we're doing on this island. And why our leader is really the one who's killing us. I'm sure Kyoya would love to hear this new development. Hold on, does that mean that sweet little Nana is like an enemy of humanity? Well, that sure would explain why she's trying to kill me. I can still get out of this. I'll just have to kill him and destroy those photos. I'm sorry, I still don't understand what's going on with those photos. But I hope you can trust me when I say that I haven't done anything wrong. What do I have to do to convince you I'm innocent? <laughs> to start, having you as my girlfriend would be nice. <sighs> yeah, that's the stuff. So, I'm curious, isn't there some way you could use your precognition talent for the good of humanity? Who cares? Overachievers like that are so cringy. You can't change the future anyway, so what's the point? But couldn't you warn somebody if they were in danger? Then they could at least try to save themselves. Yeah, great idea. People love it when you tell them they're about to die and there's absolutely nothing they can do but wait. Think about it. It's like when a doctor says to a patient that they're terminal and can't change their fate. Oh, dang, wait a minute, I just dropped some dope rhymes. I'm gonna enjoy killing this idiot. Tomorrow, I think I'll have you clean my ears in your birthday suit. If I wanted to, I could kill him now. Ow! If I didn't know better, I'd think you were trying to hurt me. Sorry, it was an accident, I swear! Like I said, the photo prophecies always come true. And I was still alive in that pic I showed you before.
So that means no matter what, I'm gonna live until 10 p.m. There ain't nothing either of us can do to change destiny. You're two puppets on the strings of fate. If I try to kill him right now, will the hands of fate somehow intervene and allow him to live? It's late in the evening, and these dorm walls are thin, so causing a commotion would be unwise. Now that I think about it, I guess we don't know what'll happen after she attacks me, do we? Will I fight back and get out of there alive? Or is Nana gonna kill me for real? Uh, no use worrying. Better to just hunker down and wait and find out. In that case, I should head back to my room. What about hunker down, don't you get? <laughs> In case you forgot, I'm blackmailing you. You're my girlfriend starting tomorrow, so you better make it fun for me if you know what's good for you. Understood. I'll stay here tonight. <laughs> cool. Good night, baby. Is that the camera? So his premonitions come in his dreams. He doesn't have any control over which future events he sees. If he could consciously search the future, then he would try to foresee what i do to him after the attack. <sighs> this is bad. I thought this might have been some sort of magic item, but it's just a normal camera. Which means the ability to see the future comes entirely from Tsunikichi's talent. If there's nothing special about this, then destroying it along with its picture should eliminate the evidence. We'll have to find the right opportunity. Is the future set in stone? There's nothing I can do to change it? Yeah, right. Destiny can shove it. <sighs> hey, good morning, hot stuff. Looks like you didn't try to murder me in my sleep. Can you please stop joking around? Well... Not like you could anyway. Until this exact scene happens, your boy is gonna be straight up untouchable. So the images in your photos are for sure? Those events always happen exactly as shown? What's wrong? You getting scared or something? Don't worry your pretty head, babe. The two of us can just stay away from the P.E. shed and it'll be fine. But you said that the future can't be changed. Then it's inevitable that we'll wind up like that photo, right? Yeah, which is why we're gonna be living our best lives until then. After all, there's no telling when it'll happen. Judging by the phase of the moon, it could happen as early as tonight. Okay, now'd be a good time for you to do your girlfriend duty and clean up my room. What should I do? If Kyoya sees that photo, I'll be in trouble. You're being so bad. I know you're hiding something. A am I? You see, I always have five premonitions every night, and sometimes when I'm lucky, I get some pretty spicy material. Like that one with you and Nakajima. Five premonitions? Uh-huh. We all have our limits, and now you know mine. I can only take five photos a night. Crap. Imagine my surprise when I woke up to four measly photos this morning, and I get the feeling the spiciest picture is close by. <laughs> Time for a good old-fashioned friskin! <laughs> No wonder you took this one! It's total fire. No, there's no way that could happen. Then what was the point in hiding it? I didn't want you to see it and get the wrong idea. You have to believe me. I don't get what I'm seeing in those pictures. Why would I attack you when I know I'm gonna die? It doesn't make any sense. Who cares about sense when fate is locked in? You just gotta let it happen. Shouldn't we at least try to change the future? Instead of just waiting around for a cruel, inevitable death? We both know that you don't really want to kill me, so please hear me out. Hmm. All right, let's make a deal. Since I'm gonna live in the end no matter what I do, I'll be in that PE shed tonight to see what goes down. And if nothing happens at 10 p.m., then maybe I'll trust you, or whatever. I promise you that nothing will happen. Not at 10, anyway. Well, I'm gonna tidy the room a bit. You can go take a bath in the meantime if you'd like. Oh, sure. Thanks a lot, babe. The future changes starting now. Oh, you stupid <laughs> idiot. The enemies of humanity should be more scared of me. You got that right. 
Don't I know it? <laughs> Could their timing be any worse? If I try attacking Sunenkichi now, those morons in the hallway might overhear it and intervene. So, I was thinking about it while I was washing up, right? I don't have any reason to attack you, right? And it would be a real shame if I ended up killing such a cutie, so... What if I had to do it out of self-defense? Wait, but if you only had to defend yourself, why would the photo show my clothes torn apart? As if you roughed me up a little bit. Maybe in the moment, I just couldn't help myself. You know how cute you are. <laughs> no way in hell will I let this pig kill me. Whew, I'm starting to get excited for tonight, if you know what I mean. In that case, is it okay if I leave now? I'd like to have a chance to take a bath, too. You gonna freshen up for me, babe? Go ahead. I'll see you at ten. If you stand me up, I'll make sure everyone on the island sees those photos. It's almost time. <laughs> There's no way you can change the future. Sunikichi thinks he's untouchable and won't get attacked before 10 p.m. But I set his watch back 10 minutes, so I can get the jump on him. Wait a sec, you're here early! Uh... Yeah, as if. <laughs> it doesn't matter how hard you try. <laughs> this is how it ends! set my watch back to the right time. Honestly, what kind of idiot do you take me for? You think I wouldn't keep track of the time with my talent? But here's the kicker. Even if I hadn't noticed, it still would have gone down exactly like that pick. Plot twist, it doesn't matter what time it actually is. If murder o'clock starts at 10 p.m., then it's whenever this watch says it's 10 p.m. I gotta say, I'm surprised. As soon as I realized you tried to tamper with things, that's when I knew for sure you were going to try to take me out. Now I can enjoy this guilt-free, and believe me, I am gonna enjoy it. What surprised me the most was how I dropped my case of poison needles at the last minute. But you were a close second. Turns out you're not the giant fool I immediately took you for. Seems you were right. Destiny is real. Things didn't change no matter what I had tried. The future played out just like the photos. <laughs> In a way, I have to thank you. When you pushed me down, I landed right where I dropped my needle case. I hate to think that it was all a predetermined course of events, but if this is what fate had in store for me, then I guess it was inevitable. Wait, why am I the one dying? The photo said you were supposed to bite it tonight. I don't expect the enemies on this island to understand. Fate doesn't favor you. It's clear that destiny is on the side of humanity. Regardless of that, I wanted to see if it was possible for me to shape the future with my own hands and take charge of my destiny. What? At the start, my first obstacle was to figure out how to lure you to a secluded location, since you had decided to remain in the safety of your bedroom. But I knew that someone like you who could see the future wouldn't let their guard down unless they felt like they'd won. That's where I find my opening. Wait, that's right. The future's already set, and that photo of you... It's just an ordinary photo I took with your camera last night. I staged the whole thing. It was bait to lure you into my trap. Since it wasn't one of your premonition photos, I thought you might notice. I was just waiting for the right moment to let you find it. You surprised me with that frisking, though. But, since my reaction seemed so genuine, you convinced yourself the photo was real. This is the actual photo you took. <laughs> <laughs> now, the real ordeal begins. How do I get out of this? Hidagi, what are you doing in here? I haven't seen you around since last night, so I went to go look for you and I am... I just wanted to give you all the files I collected. You know, the one about everyone's talents and stuff.
Care to explain? I'll explain it all later! But right now, Michiru, please heal Tsunekichi! Uh, uh, right! <laughs> I'll have to play off of whatever they say. You're pretty hard to track down. We asked everyone in your dorm where you were. When we did, we learned that Tsunekichi was saying some strange things about you. Things that were out of the ordinary, even for him. Nana's my girlfriend now, so suck on that, losers! <laughs> Believe whatever you want, dude. You're obviously nuts. After that, we went to his room to investigate. From there, we decided to search for the two of you. <sighs> Don't tell me they saw that photo. Is that what brought them here? If I remember correctly, Tsunekichi has precog powers. Damn it all. I'm wondering, what's happening in this photo? If he saw that photo, it's over. What are you talking about? Wait, it's that one? Does he have the others? I might be able to get out of this. My healing didn't work on him. You're lucky Inukai's so loyal. She bolted out of the room the moment she saw this photograph. Even though I wanted to come help you, I didn't know where to go. But Kilya helped point me the right way. Which means that there's a chance. Um, were there others? Other what? Other pictures. Did you find any other photos in the room besides the one of me being killed? I didn't. Oh, I think I remember catching a glimpse of another interesting one. There was soba on your head for some reason. So I was right. Why do you ask, Nana? Perhaps there's another photo you don't want people to see, is that it? Good. I can use this. To tell you the truth, he was blackmailing me using his precog talent. He told me that he had a premonition where he was attacked by an enemy of humanity, and there was photo evidence. But when he showed me the photos... Photos? Of what? Uh, he said they were photos of the future, with me changing and bathing and other um, private things. He said if I didn't do as he said, he'd show everyone. That's so horrible! <sighs> that would explain why you asked me if I'd seen any other photos. You were worried I saw you bathing. <laughs> Not only have I thrown him off, I'm certain that he won't try to find more of those Precog's photos now. Then what? He attacked you for defying him, and you had to kill him? Hey, you don't have to be so blunt about all of this. I swear, I haven't done anything wrong! Yeah, she's innocent! I couldn't find any injuries on him. It's possible that Tsunekichi might have had some sort of underlying illness. It might have been an enemy of humanity. I did sense a presence before he died. He has no external injuries. Don't the enemies of humanity use sharp tools like spears or gimlets? I think the textbook said something about them being able to curse people, too. Right. Anyway, I truly appreciate the two of you coming to save me when you saw I was in trouble. And regarding Tsunekichi, I'll tell the whole class tomorrow. And please, don't blame him. None of what happened was his fault. They appear and disappear suddenly without a sound or trace of presence. They kill with spears one day, then use unexplainable curses the next. These freaks are dangerous. <laughs> a time traveler. An immortal. And a precog. Who are the real freaks around here? I think I'll keep working on the body a bit more. There's something else I want to try. Sure, whatever you want. My top priority right now is retrieving the rest of those photos. It was dumb luck that Kyoya didn't see these. Or maybe it was the destiny Tsunekichi kept going on about. Why are you here, <laughs> Hiragi? I thought you might go to your room to rest. I stayed here with Tsunekichi last night, so I was just grabbing my stuff. I forgot a few things, that's all. But what are you doing here, Kyoya? Relax, you don't have to worry. I'm not here to steal your private pictures, if that's what you're thinking. Mm. It's just, I saw something on the body that piqued my curiosity. Oh well, it seems like I can't find it. What are you looking for? Oh, good question. Remember the theory about Tsunekichi having some kind of illness? I figured I would see if he had some meds stashed away. So you think his death was caused by something other than an enemy of humanity? On the contrary. I want to eliminate all the other possibilities besides an enemy of humanity. You're a shameless liar. But since you're here, I can ask you. This is one of the photos Tsunekichi took, right? I believe so, yes. 
Despite what it shows, he was the one who wound up dead. Isn't that strange? Oh, is that all you've got? Tsunukichi constantly bragged about how his psychic visions always came true. Destiny's insane and fate's always defined. That's my life's punchline. Or something. Wait, what did he mean by punchline? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was his attempt at being a hip-hop artist. Oh, that's fascinating. I only listened to Enka and Pop, so he lost me. Yeah, me too. I wonder if this means Tsunekichi was wrong about destiny, and the future can be whatever we want it to be. I think that's the case. After all, heroes in manga defy their fate quite often. That kind of outlook makes me think that we were meant to be best friends, Kyoya. However, there could be another possibility. What if this photo wasn't taken by Tsunekichi? <laughs> Just a theory. What? How did you even get there? Something about this photograph is fishy. Well, at first it seems like someone strangled you to death with a rope. If you look closely, the rope's doubled over for some reason. Doubled over? Suicide is one thing, but if this were murder, the rope would usually be wrapped around the neck once. It takes too much time to wrap it around twice, so the victim would have a better chance of escaping. But it is possible that the murderer looped the rope around twice, right? Yeah, it just seemed odd to me, that's all. He's just grasping at straws, but he's still a real threat. He'll latch on to even my smallest mistakes. If this wasn't a real premonition photo, then it's entirely possible that Hiragi took it herself. But why would she do that? Maybe it would help her kill Tsunekichi. If a person who believes that the future is locked saw that picture, he'd probably let his guard down. By the way, where is Michiru? Oh, she was inspired by her selflessness, so she wanted to stay with the body to work on it a little longer. Oh, I see. She's still there? In that case, I need to go check on her. I wonder, what really happened between her and Tsunekichi tonight? If only I could have seen the other photos, I'd have a more complete understanding of the situation. But I was too late. What's worse, I don't even know what the weapon was this time. There's one missing. Is it in Tsunekichi's room? It can't be. I checked every inch of that place, which could only mean... Damn it! <sighs> I guess it didn't work. I need to hone my abilities so I can be useful and help more people the way Nana does. Did you see something you shouldn't have? I found it in Tsunekichi's clothes. What does it mean? Well, first off, it's pretty obvious that Tsunekichi couldn't always accurately predict the future. Uh, sure, it's just, I think I remember him showing us photos that actually did come true once. His powers were probably stronger back then, but I bet since he's come to the island, he hasn't been putting in the work on his gift. You're right. He did ditch class whenever he could. I heard his thoughts, I'm afraid. He was lying to us. He could turn his dreams into photos, not see into the future. But he had a hard time admitting that, even to himself. He always bragged about how he was the real deal, and everyone else was doing party tricks. So, you mean that photo was just... That's right. It was only a dream. Uh... Do you know what I think? He drained us because he didn't like that Nakajima and I were so close. Uh, he was jealous of you two? And his feelings drove him to have a super morbid dream? I'll just get rid of the photo. And let's agree now that this will be our little secret, okay? Our little secret? Yes, I'd love that! By the way, what exactly were you trying to do? Uh, well... It doesn't look like I was anywhere close to succeeding, but I was trying to bring him back to life. <laughs> it was an unnatural death, so why didn't you call the police? <sighs> look, kid. There isn't exactly a police department on this island. Hold on. If we commit a crime, who's gonna lock us up? Even if one of you talented did break the law, no one would come to arrest you. Though the military would intervene in any real emergency. Hey, Michiru. Huh? 
You really shouldn't use your power so recklessly. Doesn't it shorten your lifespan? Uh, they decided I don't care. Oh, it did scare me a little at first. Since there's no way to know exactly how much I'm shaving off my life. You know what it reminds me of? How even though it's common knowledge that junk food shortens your lifespan, some still eat it. I'm like them. I know it's bad for me, but I do it anyway. But if you tried to resurrect someone, and you died because of it, I'd be totally inconsolable. Wow. Thanks. That means a lot to me. The committee did say that the talented have the ability to evolve their own powers, so I have to be careful. It means the entry data from when my classmates came to the island may be unreliable. Listen up, folks. Doesn't anyone else see these plot holes? <gasps> Tsunakichi was never sick. According to Hiragi, the enemies of humanity killed him. Oh my gosh! Is that real? Come on, Kyoya, that's enough! Stop scaring everyone as a joke! I'm just saying before the cremation, I'd like to perform an autopsy. By yourself? Can you do that? Well, I've been planning to wait until the police came, but now... Hey, can we go talk, please? Why can't you just accept that he was sick? So he assaulted you, then just randomly had a heart attack. Well, I mean, his heart rate would have been up. That kind of thing does tend to happen. Sorry to say this, but you seem kind of angry. Are you okay? Well, I'll be honest, it was pretty scary, having that building explode when I was feeding the cat. Wait, are you saying that wasn't an accident either? <laughs> wow, that's wild. You really can read my mind, can't you? Yes. Though I had the ability to hear another person's inner voice, I was still surprised when I saw it with my own eyes. But I already knew you were immortal, long before the shed exploded. I found out first that night when we were talking about Nakajima's watch by the cliffs. I realized it then. What are you trying to say? Uh, uh, well, I'm not sure exactly. I don't really want to go there, but it's possible there's a serial killer. The question is, why would that person try to kill you? <clears throat> Especially since you can't be killed. She has a good point. It is strange. If Hiragi can read minds, why would she try to kill me before Tsunikichi? I could understand me being the final target. But who would be stupid enough to botch my murder and risk having a cloud of suspicion hanging over them like that? They think only the talented are allowed here. I'll use that premise to my advantage. Discovering Tsunikichi was poisoned wouldn't help him much, but I want to avoid giving him any leads if possible. Regardless, I think it's worth learning the cause of death. But, um... Hey guys, could you not? This is a funeral. Ooh. No, wait! Can somebody please stop Yaya? Hey, loser! That's your leader talking there! Halt! Autopsies are so barbaric, and I'm certain the deceased would agree with me. There's not any need for a pesky autopsy. Not when we can just ask the deceased directly. What the bloody hell? Necromancy, it's Shinji's talent! Well, this just keeps getting better. I don't really know why, but you want to learn how soon Ikishi died, right? Can you find out? Yes, if the body remembers. <laughs> don't worry, this guy might be a real zombie. But he's not the kind that eats you. I always thought there was a strange air about him. Wait, holy crap! He uses necromancy, the magic that controls the dead? Now take it easy, guys. You all seem like you're getting pretty freaked out. But Shinji isn't a bad guy, FYI. Stay out of this, Yuka. It's not like I asked you to come here and help me. Hey, now! I am only trying to cover your creepy necro butt, you big jerk! Anyway, what's the plan? I can control dead bodies at will. I can see their surroundings through their eyes, I have access to their memories, and I can even use their talents. Hold on! What's going to happen to his soul? What soul? You mean his soul? I wouldn't know anything about that. Then it's time for amateur theater hour. Please don't go through with this! I just heard a whisper, and I'm positive it came from Sonikichi's soul! He's suffering so much! 
<laughs> this is nuts, right? Please kill ya! <sighs> I still insist that we need an autopsy. But I can't do that if you make him a zombie. Come on, Shinji, please just drop it. So, hold on. You want me to stop? Because I was fine either way. Again, just like FYI, Shinji seriously isn't a bad guy. So, uh, can I bring in the Buddhist priest now? Hey, are you free after class? Look, honey, you're a dude with a girlfriend, aren't you? <laughs> no, there's no need for violence. Ugh, misogynist pig! Yuka. Oh, hey, what's up with you? Do you know where Shinji might be? Shinji? Yes, I haven't seen him in class much lately. Ugh, maybe he's in bed. Ditching school is kind of the norm for him. Oh, I see. So showing up at the funeral wasn't typical behavior for him? Why do you ask? Because as your leader, I feel I should get to know everyone better, right? Oh, good call. There are enemies of humanity among us after all, huh? It's super wild. And thanks. It's kind of you to look out for Shinji. He can be pretty dark, you know? He calls himself a necromancer like it's a good thing. And he has no friends. Uh, well, he definitely lives oh. up to the title. I was stunned when I saw him moving Tsunikichi. He just wanted to show off in front of everybody. He's always been such a child. Ugh. When I murder Shinji, she'll be the most upset. Ah. So they're a couple. Even better, I can kill them together. Date night in the woods is a bold choice. Oh my gosh, I know, right? I was in bed when I heard their voices, so I came out here to check on them. I'm out on patrol too, considering how you and Sunikichi were both attacked when you were alone at night. You still have the wrong idea about me, don't you? Anyway, if I were the killer, Shinji would be my next target. I wouldn't want to let the dead incriminate me. <laughs> is someone huh? there? Uh, sorry to disturb you two, that's my bad. Were you spying? In a slasher flick, you'd be dead. The kids making out are always the first to go. Uh, except we're not. <laughs> this one's just an old friend, though she might like to think she's more. Unfortunately, I only have love for the dead. Uh, why do you always have to be so morbid? Look, just forget what you saw tonight. Otherwise, you should go ahead and prepare yourselves for a less than peaceful rest in your coffins. Then again, I guess you're immortal, aren't you? Considering that I can harness the abilities of the dead, I gotta say... I'm curious to see what would happen in your case. Oh, well, I'd have to die first, though, so we'll never know. Yuka, I'll see you later. That's so sweet. You two really are a couple, huh? <laughs> well, I'm just kind of stuck with him, if you know what I mean. We grew up in the same neighborhood, that's all. He lived next door and was in the same class. His hand looked like it was injured. Oh, you're right. It's a burn scar. He tries to hide it. About five years ago now, we were at the movies together and there was a big fire. Shinji can be pretty responsible when he needs to be, believe it or not. He helped the scared patrons escape. Unfortunately, he was too busy being a hero to save himself. So you saved him, I'm guessing. Damn right! And what an adrenaline rush! I can see the smoke rising from outside and it looks so bad, but when I thought about poor little Shinji trapped inside, I punched the emergency exit door open with my fist. That was the moment I discovered I had special powers. Although people had already called me She-Hulk up to that point. So I picked up Shinji who'd passed out from the smoke and carried him out. He really is like a danger-prone kid brother. <laughs> It's more typical for necromancers to play the villain, but he's a good guy? Mm. He's this big introvert, so he rarely comes to class. But I just want everyone to know that people like him exist. Uh, we have training next period. I have to admit, I don't love exercising. Agreed. I better go take a nap in the infirmary. Why, are you okay? Actually, no. I was up late on patrol last night, so I didn't get much sleep. I get it. I'll make sure to tell the teacher for you. 
I should be able to slip out through this window and run to the boys' dorm without anyone noticing. Kyoya's on patrol at night, so... Now's my chance. Hey. Where is Hidagi? Good. Keep sleeping. Don't worry. Your girlfriend will join you soon enough. I need to hurry. Kyoya might still be tailing me. Um, I've noticed that you seem to keep pretty close tabs on Nana. Well, she's my friend. Hey, doggy, can we come in? for help this is as good as confessing i was on my way to the boys dorm but i can't avoid it hey yuka do you think you could maybe use your superhuman strength to lift up the grate who me uh well i sorry i can't use it right now huh? does her power have limitations too just calm down the cat doesn't look hurt so it should be okay can you go to my room and get a can of cat food she looks pretty friendly, so she'll probably jump out as soon as she gets a good whiff. What a high-maintenance little kitty you are. Say, thanks for saving me, Nana. Yoya, thank you so much for the help. I see you can hear cats in her voices, too. Yeah, it kind of comes and goes. I'm so sorry uh -oh. I couldn't step up when you needed me. <laughs> I'm allergic to animals, and when I sneeze, I can't use my powers. <laughs> Aw, what a cute weakness. She's making even less sense now. Is it possible that a cat rescuer like her could also be a cold-blooded killer? Yuka Sasaki, you don't seem like a bad person, but a mission is a mission. You can die in your sleep, just like Shinji. <laughs> Thankfully, Shinji saw everything for me. I was too sloppy. My gut said something was off. Why didn't I trust it? I bought her story because she has super strength, but emergency exits always open outwards. They have to, so people inside can get out quickly and easily. So how could she smash it open from outside? It doesn't add up. And when she couldn't save the cat, it wasn't allergies. It's obvious now that who's ever holding me down is the true muscle of this duo. Which means the necromancer is not Shinji. Shinji will never die. Not now, not ever. I won't allow it to happen. So it was you. <laughs> no mistaking it. Shinji's a corpse. But I didn't sense another presence when I sneaked into her room, because there isn't one. That would also explain why his pasty skin is cold as ice. Let's all keep quiet now. It's nighttime. <laughs> Sorry about that, Nana. Did it hurt? Here's the thing. Shinji has always had a hot temper. He sees himself as a smart person. And he is smart, but he's also proud to a fault. Once he snapped because he scored 98 on a test, he went completely berserk. He was like, why not 100 as he ripped it up and stuff? Adorable, right? But he's always been so gentle with me. That day was so much fun. We went out together that night, too. We ate crepes from a stall at the farmer's market. And even though Shinji gets squeamish, he let me hold his hand. The movie was great. See, the theater was newly built. I bought some tea at concessions. Oh, and Shinji had melon soda like a little kid. Then something kind of crazy happened. Before the movie started, we were waiting in our seats. And the guy sitting to my right accidentally spilled his drink when he was setting it down. It splashed all over my skirt. But he wouldn't even apologize. So Shinji ended up losing his temper. He leaned over from my left to yell in his face. The crazy thing is, when he did, he spilled his soda. So I got totally drenched on both sides. It was pretty hilarious. 
you listening? <laughs> oh, sorry. Didn't finish my story. So it was a really scary movie. And I was clutching Shinji's arm from the beginning of the opening credits. He said he wasn't scared, but I could feel him shaking. After the movie, when the end credits began to roll, the fire alarm went off and everyone started freaking out. It was totally insane. People were jumping out of their seats in confusion, pushing to get to the exits. I lost Shinji in the chaos. I evacuated before him, then waited outside for what felt like hours. I tried to convince myself that he was okay. But the next time I saw him, he was on a gurney. He'd suffocated. His collar looked weird because he's always been so tiny and his uniform never fit right. He was so busy using his power to save everyone else, he didn't save himself. Tragic, right? So that would mean, at the funeral, that was all you, controlling Tsunikichi. Come on. How could I resist the opportunity to show the world what a hero Shinji is? I want everyone everywhere to see how much he loves me and how unwilling he is to live without me. She's insane. Hey, Yuka. How much longer do I have to keep her pinned down? Oh, sorry, babe. Well, she did sneak into my room and stabbed my neck with a needle and all that. Yeah, you told me. She said before that she could use dead bodies to see their immediate surroundings. But then she just had to go and save a little cat like an absolute angel, so I thought maybe I had her figured all wrong. Yeah, that's why you said we should wait until nighttime to see what she was up to. I guess this means she really did come here to kill me. Well, yeah, didn't you hear her say your girlfriend will join you soon enough? That one's got to screw loose. I know, right? She's the crazy one around here! Uh, it's like she has a split personality. I may have felt silly pretending to hear Sunikichi's soul, but Yuka has been putting on her own sick little puppet show. <laughs> oh, yikes. She still had her needles on her. Thanks, Shinji. Sorry about this, Nana, but it's time to give up, okay? Give up? There's always been something off about this island. I didn't really care, though, as long as I could be with Shinji. But now you've tried to kill us, which is a bit much. I'll be filling in the class on everything you tried on us ASAP. <laughs> What's your deal? I keep remembering how flustered you were at the funeral when Kiyoya suggested an autopsy. Wait a minute. Did you kill Tsunekichi? Nakajima and Shibusawa are also MIA. Let me take a wild guess. <laughs> yes, I killed them. <gasps> That's right. I get that I'm a murderer, but you know what? At least I let the dead rest in peace. I get that I'm a murderer, but you know what? At least I let the dead rest in peace. <gasps> Man. So that's who's behind the mask. Yikes. Pretty scary. But even if you go berserk, you know you can't defeat both of us. But I don't need to. I'll just explain that I saw you while on night patrol. Huh? Cut the crap, sweetie. It's not gonna work. Shinji and I both saw what you did. You won't get away with this. Shinji is already dead. You're merely animating him. Well, everyone else believes he's alive. I'll have to tell them the truth about you two then, won't I? If you're not a necromancer, and you really are just super strong, you should be able to prove that. But you can't, can you? Wonder what'll happen next. Humans have a way of not caring about the truth. They believe people. Think about it. I was chosen to be class rep, and you're a crazy necromancer who screws her dead boyfriend every night. At the end of the day, who do you think they're gonna side with? Still, she's taken my poison needles. I might not have a motive, but if Kyoya finds my weapon, he'll have damning proof. So I have a proposal. I'm assuming you still don't want the rest of your classmates to know that your boyfriend is dead. As it is, no one would guess that the self-proclaimed necromancer is actually an animated corpse. What's your proposal? I give you my word that I'll keep your secret, and that I'll spare the lives of both you and Shinji. Dude, are you crazy? Take a look around. I obviously have the upper hand here. I'll earn your cooperation. I'll admit, I lost this round. So as a sign of goodwill, why don't I tell you something your heart is dying to know? 
What could that possibly be? Well, I can tell you exactly what Shinji is whispering in his head right now. <gasps> oh, yes. I can hear the thoughts of the dead, too. <sighs> if you'll agree to release me, then I can focus on Shinji and read his mind. Do you accept? From everything she said, she's clearly a hopeless romantic. Don't you want to hear him? I can deliver a message from heaven. From the heart of the boy you love. <gasps> Excellent. Thank you. Okay, let's give it a go. Hmm. What did he say? Oh, wow. He said kill Nana. <gasps> Don't be stupid, Yuka. Oh. She's absolutely right. If you want to hear my voice, then all you have to do is kill her. When you animate the dead, you can use their powers, too. You're right, babe. I should totally just kill Nana. Then all my secrets will be kept safe and sound. Good. She took the bait. Now comes the hard part. There she is. <laughs> This way. Killing Yuka, the one with powers, would be ideal. But her bodyguard is an obstacle. I need to incapacitate him somehow. But how do I do that? <laughs> that was Sunikichi's necklace. Why does Yuka have it? Doesn't make sense. Let's test my hypothesis. I thought she went into these bushes. Keep your guard up. You brought the backup just in case, didn't you? Yep. She's not getting away from me. <laughs> what a pretty necklace. Uh? Let me guess. Are you keeping Shinji's remains in that pendant? Considering you wear it even in your sleep, it must be pretty precious to you. The burden of necromancy. We need relics, or basically anything the corpse has touched or handled in real life. Like Tsunekichi's necklace. Now I see. You stole his necklace before the funeral. Then you manipulated his corpse so that you could get the class all hyped up about Shinji. You really did Tsunikichi dirty. <laughs> Says the girl who killed him, right? Please. Just wondering, what happens if I take that pendant from you? Uh, oh, I'd like to see you try. Wait, her voice was coming from over here, wasn't it? That hurt! Uh, crap. Better hurry before day breaks. When Yuka's forced to defend herself, she has to control Shinji at the same time. If I keep startling her while retreating into the dark, I should be safe. That's odd. I'm sure I'm leaving some tracks behind. But even so, how the heck is Yuka able to follow me in the dark like this? it because of my powers. Anyway, there's like a lot of bodies buried in the mountains here. What's more, I checked their memories and they all had hella gruesome deaths. Some of them are actually former teachers. Some are students with talents. And one of them was fascinating. He had the power of a night vision. So now I can totally see in the dark. What happened here? I know this island has housed enemies of humanity for a while, but... Was there a talented civil war? Or could this have been my predecessor's doing? The committee didn't say a word about this, though. Scary stuff, right? I guess maybe I should have restored their bodies fully the same way I did with Shinji. Now, let's play tag, shall we? I don't have time to work out mysteries at the moment. <sighs> That's right. When I looked under Yuka's bed, I saw other strange objects down there. Not just Tsunikichi's necklace. Don't tell me those all belong to these creepy zombies. <sighs> what can I do? She's got good visibility and countless allies. It's impossible to attack Yuka. <laughs> Crap! Oh, 
you go, girl. Seems like I shook him off. A random abandoned cabin? It's broken. Which means it only locks from the outside. Shinji never comes to school during the day. And when I snuck into his room earlier, it was eerily dark. It's flimsy logic. Then again, the supernatural powers of the enemies of humanity can't be easily explained with logic. My theory is unconfirmed. But maybe if I can hide from them till sunrise, or... I could just cut and run. But I can't let myself do that. After all, a loss here would be an open admission that the talented can subjugate the talentless. If my theory's unconfirmed, I need to stand my ground till I confirm it. Nice. Found you! <laughs> oh, were you trying to barricade yourself in there? Just like in a zombie movie? <laughs> Not a queenie. I'll be straight with you. This cottage is like a straw house to Shinji. Then he's welcome to come on in. Of course, you've got a trap set up in there, right? Man, what should I do? It's almost morning. I couldn't possibly risk letting you do something to hurt my Shinji. Mornings don't work for you, huh? Then maybe hurry up and attack me. Oh dear, didn't you check under the bed? <gasps> I am attacking you. <laughs> What a bummer. Looks like we're out of time. The sunlight. You got it. I have to keep them away from the sunlight. It's the only way I can animate them and channel their senses. I'm impressed. Any normal person would have gone well out of their way to avoid provoking me to attack them. You've got balls for sure. I'll be more careful from now on. So, you're not coming in? I'm a sitting duck in here, and the door is unlocked. Yeah, like I'd attack you without my army. It's silly to fight when no one has my back. It's much smarter to lock you in here. I'll just come back for you later tonight. By the way, any tools you can use to escape are outside. I'm sure you tried to reinforce your fortress, but that kind of backfired. <laughs> Think I'll take a nice hot bath and go to class. Damn it! Sorry to interrupt your nap. Is Hidagi absent? Huh? Oh, you mean Nana? I'm not sure, but we were up pretty late talking last night. Talking about what? Oh, you know, just random girl talk. What's up? Never mind. Just as long as she's okay. Mm-hmm. Your necklace is about to come off. The clasp is wide open. <laughs> Thank you. Incidentally, what is this girl talk? Oh, well, it's like, uh... I need to get out of here fast. When the sun sets, the zombies might wake up. Now then! Wonder how our girl's doing. Be careful. Huh? She could easily charge at us. Yeah, the trickiest part is opening the door. Shinji, do your thing. Hey, Nana! Ready to give up, hun? She's gone. Check beneath the bed. Is there any other place in here where she could be hiding? You did lock the door, didn't you? Yeah. It seems unlikely, but it's possible she could have broken the door down from the inside. Well, let's run a simulation and see. So? Nah, I don't think she could have done it. Not even the adrenaline rush would have been enough. The bars are still intact on the window, too. I wonder if she dug through the floor. Ah, nope, I've got it. <laughs> that was a close call. I was right, though. She didn't run away. What do you mean? Look around. She was lying in wait here, ready to pounce on us. Isn't that right, Nana? <gasps> what the heck is going on here? Not sure. So what then? She escaped? Calm down. Animate the bodies and we'll find her. <sighs> huh? 
How is this even possible? Maybe the whole mind reading thing was a lie. Could she have some other power? What do you think, Shinji? I'll murder that bitch. I've done nothing wrong. If she really wants to kill me, like if she's seriously trying to tear Shinji and me apart, then... Good morning, <laughs> sweetie. Think you've won. <gasps> Wait, what do you want with that thing? I use this necklace to animate Shinji! I wondered why you blabbed on and on so freely about your weakness. Necromancers need relics. Relics that the corpse has touched in life. That part is probably true. There's often a grain of truth behind a good lie. And I did see you animate Tsunakichi. Thing is, I happen to notice something else. That necklace falls off way too easily. If it were truly important, you would have made sure to repair the faulty clasp ASAP. <gasps> then last night, when I tried to steal it, I noticed you instinctively reached for your back pocket rather than the necklace. Your unguarded knee-jerk reaction exposed your lie. <sighs> but I never imagined it would be something this pathetic. I don't want to cause a scene here. If you want this back, you'll come with me, quietly. Bring Shinji too. Get a move on. <sighs> there a problem? The sun is out, so you can't animate anyone to attack me. All you can do is obey. What exactly are you gonna do to us? No! You still don't seem to understand. This is like the time you fake slept to ambush me, except our roles have been reversed. What power did you use? Power? Yeah, how did you escape from that cottage? The place was locked from the outside. You couldn't have climbed out the window either. I walked out the front door. What? But I rammed that door and I couldn't even get it to budge! I rigged it before you got there, to give myself a fighting chance to win. You rigged it? I saw that you'd reinforce the door before I got there, except... It's just like you said, that cabin would not have withstood an attack from your horde of zombies. I knew that was true, so the reinforcements on the door weren't necessarily to barricade myself inside. No way! Then what did you do? I totally could have caught you. I wanted you to catch me. To see me cower in terror from the zombies. To watch me desperately try to reinforce the door in an attempt to keep myself safe. But, though I'm sure you never would have guessed it, what I was actually doing down there was unscrewing the hinge. Nice trick, right? <gasps> when you locked the door, you took for granted that it meant I was trapped inside. But the door was never locked. It was only taped up. Which, of course, meant that opening the door required zero force. So all it took was a little tap from inside the door and I was able to push the lock off easy peasy. You really used tape to hide the missing screws? You went through an awful lot of effort to make sure I wouldn't notice. Yep. I thought you might stand watch, so I decided to stay put until I knew for sure that class had started. Once I was outside, I used the same tools to screw the lock back on properly. Then after biding my time in the mountains for a while, I returned to the dorms, close to nightfall. Wait just a minute! I don't get it. Are you saying you somehow knew I would lock you in the cottage even before I knew it myself? I needed to test things out to see if my theory was correct, if the sunlight really did hinder your abilities. I knew that if I ran into a cabin that locked from the outside, it meant there was a very good chance I would get trapped in there. But there was also a chance I could lead you to believe I was trapped. And then when you discovered otherwise, I figured you'd feel angry and frustrated that you lost me, and that you'd be exhausted from all those steep trails. That's why I fear two possible outcomes in particular. One, that you would attack without waiting for morning. And two, that I'd been fooled and the sunlight wouldn't actually stop the zombies. Theorizing can only take me so far, you know. You put your life in danger just to test your ideas? To learn how I control corpses? Figure out my weaknesses? Great, you found some of them, okay? But what would you have done if I hadn't gone back to the dorm this morning? Or what if I'd come back at night when Shinji can actually move? You're dangerous at night, but by day, with your relic dependency, you're weaker than the talentless. So I hid till I had my chance to strike, by any means necessary. <gasps> but what does that mean? Please, I'm sorry. I really am. Forgive me, I'll do anything you ask. And I won't tell anyone about what you're doing. I swear, I'll even help you however I can. Please. I beg you, give Shinji back to me. Where are my needles? Hand them over. Here. 
Excellent. Toss them at my feet. Huh? Ah! No! I am more of a cat person. I don't need another dog. No, you're a demon! How does a person become so evil? Fine, I tried to kill you, but you attacked me first! I was just scared! I wanted to be with Shinji! That's it! That's all I've ever wanted! I don't care whether your story is true, so you don't really have to answer. But where did you set your drink down? Huh? That tea you bought at the movies was Shinji. When you sat down, where was it? I don't know, in the armrest thingy? Why does it matter? No, that's a lie. The boy to your right spilled his drink all over your skirt, remember? That's what happened. At which point, Shinji angrily jumped up on your left, managing to slosh his juice on you too. In other words, the boy on your right was using your right armrest for his drink, and the boy on your left was using your left armrest for his. Which means, you had no place to put your tea. Right. I probably just misremembered. Yeah, I might have held onto my tea the whole time. Well, whatever. You also mentioned clinging onto Shinji from the time the opening credits started to roll, but fine. By the way, did you guys wear your school uniforms on weekend dates, or go with plain clothes? Mm. When you saw Shinji's corpse, you mentioned that his uniform collar looked ill-fitting. That could only mean that on the day of the fire, Shinji was wearing a Gakuran uniform. No, that's right. It was a weekday. I got that mixed up. We went right after school. Thing is, I don't care. Though you did mention something about crepes at a farmer's market, I could be mistaken, but I always thought farmer's markets were typically weekend things. What are you suggesting? Shinji's relic was a piece of the 98% A test he had ripped up. That surprised me. I assumed it'd be something more romantic like his uniform button or something. It was enough to make me suspect it was a fake, just like the necklace. But it was real. You actually picked up that piece of trash and kept it as a memento. Hard to believe a test scrap would be a relic for your boyfriend. Who would believe that? No, you're lying! I'm sorry, who's lying? You filthy stalker! <gasps> why did you go through the trouble to make us believe your powers were switched? And why did you make a fake necklace as your relic in order to conceal how Shinji really died? No, I didn't! You're wrong, I swear! What was the secret you were so desperate to keep hidden? Stop! I would never kill him! All I did was start the fire! This is all that stupid whore's fault! I did nothing wrong! That disgusting pervert stole Shinji away from me. They'd eat crepes together. She's so dumb she spilled her drink all over him. I wanted to rescue Shinji from her. If he died, I could make him mine. I would have loved to use a different relic, but he hated me. I couldn't get close. <sighs> I really should have stolen something better from him, then it never would have come to this. I don't know why I only pretended to throw this away. If my reasoning had in fact been off, and after all this Yuka was actually innocent, would I have spared her? Yeah, right. Should I have spared Yuka? If I'd made her search the memories of these corpses, I could have found out what transpired on this island. <sighs> Don't be stupid. I'm only here to carry out my mission, nothing more. So far, everyone I come into contact with mysteriously disappears. And I've had multiple absences from class, which raises suspicion. Instead of wondering what happened to these bodies, I should be thinking about how I can use them to my advantage. What you doing there, Habu? That's your name, right? <laughs> You bully people like me too, but you also pick on animals too? <gasps> no, it's not like that at all! This is for my talent! If I wanted to work right, I gotta eat live reptiles, duh! I do it because I have to! That makes sense. You turn your bodily fluids into poison, right? Ew, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's also a neat trick that drives guys wild in the sack. Anyway, what are you doing out here? <laughs> Funnily enough, I spent the entire night screwing someone too! Mm-hmm. You mean, like, with a guy? <laughs> Dang, you're such a goody-goody, you're pretty wild, ain't ya? Out of curiosity, where's that teleporting girl you're always with? Who cares? That bitch is dead to me. 
I mean, look at how she went off on me. And all I did was borrow her contacts. Even though she reacted harshly at first, it seems like she regrets yelling at you. Isn't that right, Kaori? <laughs> Aw, looks like she teleported away. But you two should be honest with each other and smooth things over before it's too late. <laughs> What'd you do? It hurts, doesn't it? I can give you the antidote if you want to make it stop. Just tell me your phone's password. What? You crazy bitch! Tell me the code you used to unlock your phone. Unless you want to die. It's... 330789! That wasn't so hard, was it? Hurry up! The antidote... And that's that. Talented's like you have lower priority, usually. But I have to do what I can to clear Kyoya's suspicion of me. Curl can teleport. I'll have to send that text at the perfect time. Especially since Kyoya has been watching me like a hawk lately. I won't have a proper opening to kill her. I'll try, though. It's gonna be risky no matter what I do. This should be enough to do it. If the wind were to interfere and blow the case onto the floor, then it's entirely possible that the victim will find it. Is this window poorly constructed? It only opens from the right side. Now then, time to face another grueling day. Mind telling me why you were absent? I noticed Yuka is also missing. And I tried looking for Shinji too, but he's unaccounted for as well. I wonder, do you know what happened to them? Yes. I'm afraid Yuka's dead. <laughs> She's dead, and it's all my fault! <coughs> Please come with me. I'll explain everything on the way. Michiru, Seiya, Moguo, would you come too? Huh? No, really? Yuka lied to us about her talent and was the real necromancer this whole time? Yeah, and she was the one who killed Shinji. She was so obsessed with him that she wanted to kill him so he could be hers forever. It was two nights ago. I accidentally revealed Yuka's secret to someone. Understandably, Yuka got angry with me. But then she went berserk and tried to use Shinji to kill me. I spent the entire night hiding. That's horrible! But in the end, I managed to get through to her. I told Yuka what Shinji's soul was saying. I heard him crying out that he still loves her, even in death. Then she jumped. <gasps> Yuka threw herself over the edge of the cliff. She said she was going to be with Shinji in heaven. And she wanted me to tell you all that she was sorry. Don't cry. This isn't your fault, Nana. Thank you. Do you mind if I ask for a favor, Moguo? Could you please burn Shinji's corpse? You're the only one I can trust to do this. Wait, why me? Please do it! I can still hear his soul screaming in pain as we speak! What do you think, Yoya? Is that okay? We can't exactly store him, so sure. I have my reservations, but it's fine. I assumed he'd want to examine the body first. Okay, top of fire! My top priority is to watch Hiragi's every move at the crime scene. It's no problem. Oh, friendly fire! Hey, maybe you shouldn't say that when you're burning up our late classmate. Could you take care of them, too? Yuka had them chasing me around all night. According to her, they died on this island a while ago. How did they get here? I'm afraid I don't know that part. But I assume they were brutally murdered. Just to make sure, you're fine with us burning them, too, right? You want me to search the bodies that badly? No, not at all. Friendly fire! fire! You're gonna focus all your energy on stalking me, huh? Too bad for you. Who knows? For all we know, your little sister could have been one of those zombies. It'll be tough. But I suppose we must tell the others the truth about what happened with Yuka and Shinji. Please don't do that! Uh -huh. Yuka was nothing but an innocent victim! I know because of the voices I heard in the forest! 
What voices did you hear? The enemies of humanity! <sighs> I could hear their inner voices, and one of them has a special power. They're able to possess people with vulnerable psyches. Uh, does that mean Yuko is being controlled by them? Yes, and I think that's why I was able to get through to her right before she died. I should have known the enemies of humanity were behind all this! Poor little Yuka must have suffered a great deal. That wouldn't be a bad plot twist if this were a manga. NOBODY ASKED YOU! Anyway, if there really is an intruder among us, it makes sense for us to be hyper-vigilant. I'll go along with Hiragi's sob story for now. But before I do, let me take a moment to ask you all this. Before and after Tsunekichi's death, where was Hiragi? And during the time of Yuka's death, why was she nearby? The same applies to Nakajima. Whenever a classmate dies, Hidagi's whereabouts are consistently suspect. Let's go! Help! Someone help! What's the matter? She's dead. But her body is still warm and rigor mortis hasn't set in. So this is a fresh kill. Within the last two hours. And you were going on and on about my whereabouts. What now, Kyoya? Tell me what happened. I came over to hang out and found her like this. <sighs> don't touch her! Uh, but I can try to save her! We don't know what the cause of death was. So it's not safe. First Tsunikichi, now Kaori? What's wrong with this girl? Did she forget that this bitch treated her like crap? All right. You three go calm everyone down. As for you, Inuka, get the medical bag from my room and bring it to me. Stat. Hiragi, you stay right huh? here. In front of me. Where I can see you at all times. And don't you dare touch that body. Right. Whatever you say. This resembles Tsunekichi's death. It's probable the killer used the same trick for both murders. Hmm. She looks like she was trying to gouge her own eyes out. Something! That was poison! I need air! Are you feeling any better now? Don't worry, something like that isn't enough to kill me. Great. Poison is out of the question. Although, it does appear to hurt him. I'll analyze the poison in this case later. In any case, assuming a poisoned contact lens is what killed this girl. We can safely say that this was a murder. Also, this fashionista... Her name was Kaori Takanashi. Like I was saying, she wore color contacts all the time. And her killer must have known this about her. Uh, how do you know that? Did you notice it in class or something? There isn't a mirror anywhere near the body, which tells me she wears contacts so regularly that she can apply them easily, without needing a reflection. No shit, Sherlock. What was her ability? Let me think. Short distance teleportation! You were aware of her talent too, yes? Why would that matter? Tell me, when you skipped morning classes today, did you happen to spend all that time in the mountains? I did. I was so traumatized that it took a while to get back. This is purely hypothetical. But while this fashionista was at her classes, it's entirely possible you could have snuck into her room and poisoned her contact lens case. Again, purely hypothetical. You're exactly right. Too bad you can't prove this theory of yours. Since you have the power to read minds, I wouldn't be surprised if you knew she wore color contacts every day. Why indeed? 
Even though you're tired, I still have more questions. There's much left to uncover. I suppose I should be used to the way you do things by now, shouldn't I? Let's see. She's been constantly on the move for the past couple days. That means it's about time for her to slip up. Our victim apparently had a falling out with her tan friend recently. Pretty sure her name is Habu. Uh, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, Michiru, remind me, what's Habu's talent again? <gasps> she can make poison. Her saliva can be deadly. Was she in class uh, today? No, although it's not uncommon for her to cut class. She says that she has to eat wild frogs and snakes for her talent to work. Sounds like Habu could be our killer. Let's go catch her. She wasn't in her room. Don't tell me. Do the enemies of humanity possess her too? Not this again. When I was with you in the forest earlier today, I heard a voice. It was the very same voice that possessed Yuka's soul. Let me get this straight. When that fashionista died, you didn't hear the enemies in her voice then. Even though you seem to hear it clearly when Inukai was in danger. Well, yeah, that's right. Which means this murder was carried out by a human, not an enemy of humanity. At that moment, was Hiragi unable to say she heard the enemy's voice for some reason? The murderer set a trap this time, and there was no telling when that trap would go off. So she didn't know precisely when it happened. Forget it. I'm gonna go search the dead girl's room again. Shouldn't we prioritize looking for Habu instead? We can do that tomorrow morning. In any case, she can't leave this island. The question is, what connection do Hiragi, Habu, and Kaori share? If Habu was possessed by the enemy like you claimed, then unfortunately she might already be dead, just like Yuka. That's a tough break, leader. I can tell by your reaction that you and Kaori must have been friends. I wouldn't put it that way. No. <laughs> well, now that you mention it, I did come visit this one time to give her a helpful lecture. I told her about how bullying people is wrong. Is that so? I messed up. That alibi couldn't have been more unnatural. Earlier today, when I went to open the window, I slid it to the left without hesitation. Since I did that, I've essentially dug myself into a hole. Because I opened the window from that direction, he knows I knew it was faulty and sticks on the left side. I've basically confessed. I've been in this room before. Guess that's a plausible excuse. Damn. Kyoya must have witnessed my blunder even while he was in the middle of writhing from the poison. His physical and mental fortitude are limitless, but me, I'm pathetic. Well, I suppose that confirms you've been in here with her before, which means you could have read her mind. So you could have known about how she wanted her contacts back, theoretically. Kyoya, I've had enough of you suspecting Nana! I hate to say it, but I think Haba might actually be the killer! A cell phone? Uh-huh, this belonged to Cody. I'm surprised people use those. These are different from ordinary phones. They're distributed when the supply ship arrives, but they don't dial anywhere outside the island. How'd you bypass her lock screen? Uh, it can unlock with her fingerprints, so I had to, you know... Wow, Michiru, you're so brave! <laughs> Let's see... The last text she got was at... At 3 o'clock! Delivered at 3.04! We were in the forest at that time, weren't we? So you're saying Hiragi couldn't have sent this text, because we were all together this afternoon, right? Yeah, that's right! Now please stop accusing Nana! Even if it is hypothetical! Stay on your guard, Inukai. I'm positive Hiragi is the killer. Huh? <laughs> Since you're still playing dumb, I guess I'll have to spell it out for you. Hey, what's going on? Why is everything so tense here? Good timing. You'll want to hear this. I'm about to expose your leader's crimes. Her what? Uh, he keeps doing this. He's insisting that Nana was the one who killed Cody and the others. Uh, uh, 
stay calm. No matter how suspicious he is of me, he can't have any solid proof that I did it. I'll tell you how it happened. This morning, Hiragi killed Habu in the forest. Then she placed the poisoned contact case in Kaori's room. Afterward, she waltzed innocently to class. You already said I wasn't the only person who wasn't in class this morning. Were you keeping track of everybody else's actions today, along with mine? Habu was absent because she went on an early reptile hunt in the forest, which is where you were. It only makes sense for you to be suspect number one. But why would you think Habu is dead in the first place? I've got a little theory. Habu's body was actually burned to a crisp by Mogu, which was your idea. That was a crucial point in your plan, wasn't it? Making sure those corpses were all incinerated. You assumed that I would try to search the bodies. But the best place to hide a corpse is in a mass grave. You messed up her face to mask her identity. Then you took it further and put a different uniform on her. It's quite plausible. He saw right through me. When you repeatedly tried to bait me to search the dead bodies, that's what clued me in initially. Obviously, I was still unaware of this new murder. So you figured I probably wouldn't recognize Habu even if I saw her. Maybe your original plan was to distract me with corpses, so you could use that cover to get rid of it. Get rid of what now? I don't get it. Still playing dumb. You tried to dispose of the definitive proof that connects you to Habu. That being herself. <laughs> The last text she got was delivered at 3.04 today. It was sent by you. Enough with these accusations! Even if I were the one who killed Kaori, why would I need to send that kind of text from Habu's phone? Because there was a possibility your attempt at poisoning her wouldn't succeed. Habu and Kaori were having a falling out, and since they were friends, Kaori definitely would have known about Habu's poison powers. If Kaori's stolen contacts return to her without explanation, she might be wary to use them. That's why you sent her an apology text as Habu in order to make her believe everything was okay. Bastard. He knows everything. How could I have used her phone? I don't know her password, so I couldn't unlock it, let alone use it. If I recall correctly, you can read minds. I can't fish out specific info like that. My power is inconsistent. Sometimes I can hear people's inner voices, sometimes I can't. And those are limitations I can't control. For all I know, you could have cut off her finger and used her prints. Or somehow tricked her into helping you. But none of that matters. You still have it on you, right? The phone is in your possession. Ever since I first saw you today, I've been keeping a close watch on your every movement which means you had no opportunity to ditch the phone after you sent that text at 3.04. I also observed that you've been frequently shoving your hand in your pocket as well. Wait, let me get this right. You're suggesting I typed a super long message in my pocket? You typed that <laughs> message in advance. All you had to do was hit the send button to try and fool us. <laughs> Please, Julia, cut it out! I'm going to search for that phone now. You still have it on you, right? The phone's in your possession. I'm going to search you for it now. found any proof. Not yet, at least. What do you mean? You still don't believe? <sighs> that was a close call. I had a hard time deciding how to dispose of Habu's phone, since that was the one item that would prove I was with her. At first, I thought the safest plan was to set Kaori's contacts on her desk this morning, send her the text, then ditch the cell before Kyoya and the others had time to catch up with me. But if I had sent the text that early, they would realize I could have done it. Also, since Kaori could teleport, I needed her to die while I was with Kyoya, not before. 
If she got the text at 9.15 a.m., then teleported to her room and died, suspicion would fall on me, since my whereabouts during her time of death would be unknown. Also, if Habu's body were to be discovered among the zombies, her phone had to be with her, otherwise it would have seemed strange. As for plan B, it was exactly as Kyoya theorized. I would hide Habu's phone in my pocket, send the text, then plant the phone by the corpses whenever the others weren't looking. I felt this was the easiest plan, assuming Kyoya could be distracted. There was only one moment I took my eyes off her, when I was examining Kaori. But I know for a fact I didn't give her a chance to toss the phone at that point. The final text was sent at 3.04pm. Until that time, the phone had to be with Hiragi. When did she do it? How did she get rid of the evidence? After a lot of agonizing, I settled on Plan C. I arranged one of the zombies in a spot that would be exposed to direct sunlight in the afternoon. Whenever its finger melted onto the phone, it would hit send. I'd be nowhere near it. It was a dangerous plan. When I was practicing the setup, I accidentally sent two texts. Also, wild animals could have moved the phone or the body. It's not inconceivable. Or, if Kyoya did search the area, he might have found the phone, and from it, discovered what I was up to. It was an endless chain of risks. But also the option with the biggest payoff, which is why I chose it. If I succeeded, not only would I have an alibi for the text, but the phone and the body, both pieces of evidence, would be burned. However, it really was a close call. My fatigue made the choice difficult. Truth be told, I actually almost went with plan B. You should apologize to Nana right now! She was traumatized by Yuka! Don't you see that? You've crossed the line here! <clears throat> I... I apologize. You asshole! Sorry's not gonna cut it! How hilarious. I seem to recall somebody suggesting that we should avoid jumping down each other's throats. Wait, that was you, wasn't it, Kyoya? Besides, what motive would Nana have to do something so evil anyway? No, it's okay. I'm so sorry that I failed you all. I let yet another student die on my watch. Kaori was murdered by Habu, who was obviously possessed by the enemies of humanity. Oh, I've just heard Habu's spirit voice. She's speaking to me. She's apologizing to Kaori and to us. And she, she wants us to work together. She wants us never to suspect each other again. You can tell, can't you, Nana? You're able to sense if we're being controlled by the enemy. Apparently. So please, don't hesitate to come to me if you need help. And if I notice any of you in danger, I'll let you know. Does that sound like a plan, Kyoya? I'm keeping the body, at least until tomorrow morning. We'll need to inform the school, too. <sighs> did the poison come from Habu's saliva, or did I prepare it? You won't be able to tell the difference. I figured I couldn't trick a mind reader, so I rushed toward checkmate too soon. But something's still off. Guess I'd better ditch this poison before Kyoya catches on. I wish I hadn't let Kaori's body take so much focus. Everyone believes Tsunekichi was sick, so in their eyes, Kaori is the first actual murder victim. But now that there's been a dead body in front of their faces, even Nakajima's disappearance will feel more real to everyone. I'm sure more of them will have their guard up, which makes my job harder. Oh, there you are. I was looking for you. I thought I would stand guard so I would know if the enemy showed up. Oh. <sighs> when you're already so exhausted? Oh my gosh, what a trooper! It's important to keep up the facade of a vigilant leader, always on patrol. And it's easier to work in the dark. Too bad. I had originally intended to get some sleep for a change, though. Listen, I'll stand guard tonight. You go ahead and get some rest. Huh? I just want to help you in any way I can, Nana. She tried to save Tsunekichi, 
then Kaori, and now me. She's a weird one. Okay, I'll map a bit. These kids are enemies of humanity. Just look at what Yuka did. Then again, look at Nakajima. Good people, bad people. It's not my job to sort them out. So... You can read minds, right? That's your thing? Yeah, you know that. <laughs> well, if that's true, then why didn't you notice this sooner? I... what? You know, when you're threatened like this, you should make more of an effort to cooperate. Why don't you tell me what your real power is? I told you! I can read- It's such a freaking pain to be head with a box cutter. I... I actually heard your inner voice just now. A part of you that you don't want to acknowledge is intensely afraid of me. Oh, yeah? Yep, now you're terrified that my talent isn't telepathy, but that my bodily fluids are poisonous. Right? I understand your apprehension. What if my blood spurted in your eye? Well, coming off of a murder by poisoning, that doesn't sound very alluring. What an impressive counterattack. I sense that you've had some combat training. As I suspected, you're not just any kid. I could always scream for help, you know. Oh, sure, but you won't, because I'm certain you wouldn't want your true talent to be exposed. No, what I really don't want is to have to tell them that you were possessed by an enemy of humanity and attacked me. I'd love to see how they react when I tell them you're a liar. It'd be fun to watch you try to get yourself out of it. They trust me because I'm the class leader. But who believes sweet Michiru is trying to trap her dear Nana? No one, that's who. Is there some trouble again? No, everything is okay! Good night! Sleep well, and I guess I'll see you in school tomorrow, sweet friend! <laughs> Nana, since you've been such a good leader to the class, I brought you a present today! What's that? Hmm? What is it? A present. Not telling! You'll have to open it and see! What's wrong? You can read my mind, can't you? Sorry. I can't read any minds right now. Probably because I'm still tired from yesterday. Okay then, no prob. I can just ask you again at lunch. But that means no present for you until then, just so we're clear. And after lunch, I'll ask again after school. I'll ask tomorrow as well. And each time, you'll have to come up with an excuse for why you can't hear my thoughts. How long can you keep that up? There's no way to know what's in that box. Don't let her bait you like this. Her mission is clear. Expose my fake talent and make the class lose trust in their leader. Yuka, Takanashi, and Habu have been killed. Is this really the time for us to sit in class? Believe me, I asked my superiors the same thing. See? Wouldn't you say we're a little bit light on students today? They're scared to show up. What does Hiragi have to say? She's the class rep. Okay, I'm thinking hard right now about what's inside the box. You can hear my inner voice, right? Well, the problem is the classroom's full of everyone else's thoughts too, so it's kinda hard to isolate your voice right now. You can't read my mind? Let's see, going off the inner voice I'm hearing the loudest... Is it maybe a sweet note? Hmm? Nope! Sorry! It's a bath set! Oh, of course. Gosh, you must be awfully tired. Will you be able to read minds when you really need to? Sure! I really did hear that inner voice. Still do. It's saying, I love Nana, over and over. Hey, Nukai. Did you know you have a note on your back? Huh? Yeah, we just felt too awkward to say anything. Especially after how hard you've been flirting with Nana like the entire morning, so... <laughs> well, I guess we were all focusing on the note at the same time. I'm guessing what most likely happened was that our inner voices drowned out Inukai's thoughts. Oh, yeah, 
Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. You guys' thoughts were so loud that I couldn't hear any... Wait just a minute! Who pulled this stupid break? I kind of assumed that Michiru put it there herself to send you a little message. Oh, now I see. I mean, I'm very fond of Michiru too, but... But you would never stoop to teasing her in a way that would hurt her feelings. Of course not! If I'd seen the note sooner, I would have grabbed it. But the point is, you were able to hear what the note said. And that proves without a doubt that you did read our minds. In other words, it would appear that Nana's talent is functioning just fine. Yes, I did it. I'd love to see you try to treat me like some kind of imposter now. Do your worst. Thank goodness! I'm glad that worked out! Thanks for the sweet present. I love it! I don't get what happened here. Like, first of all, who put that note on Inukai's back? Really? Again with your conspiracy theories? Drop it, Kyoya. It was a weirdo. stupid prank. I messed up big time yesterday. Before I do anything else, I need to rebuild their trust. My bad. Anyway, I'm now accepting applications for someone to become my BFF and eat lunch with me. You have no chill. You passed my test with flying colors today. So you gonna tell me why you brought me out here? To pick up where we left off last night. Figured as much. Before we proceed, I have a question for you. Where did you put the real Michido? Sorry, what? You messed up. Didn't you realize? Michido would have used her power to heal her hand. Aren't you clever? And I thought I was doing so well. I nailed the act pretty well, didn't I? Your talent is transformation, right? Why would you choose to turn into a weakling like Michiru? You're asking to get hurt again. I'm so fascinated by you. You could have attacked me with no warning, but I bet you're gonna ask me if Michiru is safe or not first. Not sure what you're trying to get at. All I'm saying is that for an indiscriminate serial killer, you seem awful quick to make an exception for Michiru. You're wrong. Transforming into her was a great choice. I think I'm getting further insights into your true character. <sighs> Back up. You just said serial killer? I'm Jin Tachibana. <laughs> this is your first time seeing the real me. You see, fortunately, my name's already been erased from the school roster. I'm a talented, a few years your senior, and I want to make a deal with you. <gasps> Don't worry, she'll be perfectly fine. I just put a strong sedative in her drink. Where are you taking me? All I've got is stolen cafeteria coffee. You good with that? It's fine, thanks. Are you about to tell me that you actually live here? I do sometimes, whenever I feel the urge to eat people food. Okay. It would seem Kyoya's already searched you for evidence. That must mean you don't have that special sewing kit on you. What are you talking about? Nothing specific, I'm just letting you know I have many different cards I can play to take you down. You might say my only hurdle is that I'm lacking a suitable dealer at the table. Would revealing my hand to another player give me an advantage? I've been asking this question for five years. Here's the thing. If you tell me what happened here five years ago, there's a pretty decent chance I'll be able to solve your problem for you. I certainly hope so. That's why I brought you here. Uh-huh. I had a feeling. Were those zombies your classmates or something? I did the best job I could, burying my friends. But Yuka Sasaki came along and dug them up. You're obviously a very gifted murderess. I have to commend you for bringing her to justice. My goodness, you really do know everything, don't you? Very few people have seen my talent. They have a tendency to ignore evolution in favor of writing fairy tales. As I'm sure you're aware, most birds have very good night vision. But their vision is also blurred, so truth be told, I've never gotten a good look at your sleeping face. So, you're saying you've been spying on me? The thing is, you did save my life once upon a time. That's what sparked my interest in you, initially anyway. Would you mind doing me a little favor? Could you tell Kyoya I'm tired of milk from the vending machine? <laughs> He's the cat? The stupid calico you found in the drain is the real cat. 
What was surprising was that even though you seemed to be in a hurry, you prioritized the cries of the weak. Is that who you really are inside? Who cares? I don't know who you really are inside. If I had to make a judgment based off what I know right now, you seem like a skirt-chasing pervert with a murder fetish. From what I've seen, I could yank out your heart and it still wouldn't reveal who you are inside. So I hope you'll give me the honor of sharing first. Did she use an unidentifiable poison from Habu's body? Or... Could this be the plant she used on Kaori? Gathering crystallized poison from the body isn't too difficult, but for substances of high purity, normal analysis won't suffice. Who the hell is Nana Hiragi? I'm not like the others. I'm gifted, so I'm special. It's quite unhealthy to start believing things like that during puberty. Especially if you're a teen with paranormal abilities. Five years ago, it happened organically. We just started killing each other. Back when it all began, the kids with the most promise like Nakajima went missing. Then days later, it became clear that one of the girls in class killed him. Her sole reason was she thought she was the most powerful. The others exiled to her without question, but the thing that's always stood out to me is the fact that she had feelings for the boy she killed. And her feelings were not reciprocated. And yet, the murders continued on afterward? She was the next to be killed. Then the girl who orchestrated that was blasted out of the atmosphere by a boy with psychokinesis. His dorm room happened to be next to mine. I would imagine your neighbor suddenly got very quiet, didn't he? The more powerful you are, the more fear and panic you sow. Soon we split off into factions and began warring amongst ourselves. Each side was convinced that the other was possessed by the enemies of humanity. No one planted the idea to fight in our heads. We were at war with our own imaginations. I wonder, did you ever happen to stumble upon an old, run-down cottage while you were on the run from Yuka? That site, along with this cave, were both safe houses at the time. They became necessary, since as the war escalated, we stopped going to school altogether. Didn't the school officials intervene? They retreated, almost as if they foresaw our war and wanted no part. Naturally, those of us who could fly or teleport chased after their escape vessel. I attempted to follow them too, but in the end, I gave up. I could hear the merciless cry of cannons on the ship firing toward the shore. After the faculty left, peace remained elusive. There was no official leadership to maintain the power balance among the talented. The leader of one of the warring factions was a time stopper. The other could see the future. They both boasted incessantly about being the most powerful, meanwhile fearing that in reality the other was stronger. So you decided to disguise yourself as a cat and wait the whole thing out, huh? Survival of the fittest. It's not actually the strongest who will survive a trial with those who can best adapt. So after my last comrade died, only thing that made sense was to use my powers to return home. My elderly grandmother is my only living relative, but the moment she saw my face, she prayed for my soul. It was because she was told I had died fighting the enemies of humanity. I soon learned that there was a group of people who preferred that I had died on the island. I said a final farewell to my grandmother and flew away. In time, more talented were enlisted to live on this island, and the truth remained buried beneath them. The war was, indeed, caused by our own arrogance. However, I suspect the government conspiracy was also at play. It became clear to me that I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I turned my back on all of this. That's why I returned to the island. And to my great surprise, a foreign body not present back in my day was tossed into the mix. And that's me, right? It would be easy for me to try you for murder in a kangaroo court. But you've already admitted that there's a group of people still out there who want to see you dead. Which is why you've been spying on me, I think it's safe to assume. The thing is, you'd have to out yourself to the students if you wanted them to prosecute me. And worst case scenario, 
You might spark another civil war, like the one you fought in five years ago. That's right. But we can avoid that if you tell me what your motive is for killing. Is this where our deal comes in? Nana, don't worry. I'm gonna let you do your thing for a while. Oh man, I'll bet you killed your fair share of friends during that war too, didn't you? I suggest you cooperate for your own sake. What if I say no? I'm thinking of letting everything go and starting a business overseas. Although, I thought I'd kill the pretty murderess before I left to ensure no one else died by her lethal hand. Understood. Although, if we're going to make a deal, it's imperative for us to be on equal footing. You think I have an unfair advantage? <coughs> Forgive me, but I'm wary of making packs with someone who doesn't even notice when his drink is poisoned. Sorry. Then... then you... you must have been sent by the conspirators. Cause I'm the sole survivor of that war. And I'm interested. Who will you report to about my untimely death? Report? Huh, good point. He's a pretty strange specimen. I should probably contact the committee. <laughs> Kyoya? Interesting. So this is the device that holds all your secrets, is it? Where did he come from? Know what clever magicians do? They always fail at the beginning of a show in order to misdirect the audience's attention. For example, giving you the chance to disarm me on purpose. Or maybe even putting a bandage on my hand after I've already healed it. Just to make you think that my hand was still injured. Thanks to your oh-so-typical arrogance, you underestimated the true extent of my powers. <laughs> Earlier, I mentioned that during the Civil War of the Talented, it was difficult to maintain the power balance, but there was one exception to that. <laughs> oh yes, I'm talking about myself. You don't just take on their appearance. You can copy people's powers too? Amazing, I know. The talents of everyone here. Because if my only talent was playing dress-up girl, do you honestly think I could have walked away as winner of the Battle Royale? Son of a... This guy's a true enemy of humanity. He's a monster! The Invisible Blade. Well then, I don't suppose you'd like to share exactly whom you were trying to call just now, would you? Stay calm. Think this through. Jin Tachibana may very well be the most powerful monster I've met so far, but he's not invincible. It appears that they had ended the call immediately. Perhaps you needed some kind of password? If he really could wield all the powers of the Talented, then there's no way he'd bother messing with me. He'd time travel, teleport, manipulate people, and he would have discovered the committee by now. <laughs> I don't get why you didn't just transform into me. I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything. But why wouldn't you do it? You've been cautiously attempting to sniff out my true power since last night. If you're that curious about what it is, then why not just go ahead and take my likeness? You can harness the powers of those you change into, right? So do it. What's a potential kill count? Jin Tachibana doesn't belong here. Not anymore. I should run back to the dorm and get the class on my side. can mimic people's powers, but learning to control them takes practice. <laughs> Five years ago, a kid in my class suffered a fairly common affliction. They believed wholeheartedly that they were a crusader, specially chosen by an archangel and sent on a mission to kill us, the minions of Satan. They would shove this same self-righteous potential kill count nonsense in our faces, which kind of makes me suspect this person is your partner. 
Either way, I can't simply ignore the fact that somebody provided you with this device. Perhaps the best idea for you is to ask your contact for help. What do you think? Don't be a fool. Use your power to turn yourself into Yuka Sasaki. As you already know, what made her special was her ability to draw memories from a corpse. If you're determined to learn more about me, why not just turn me into a zombie? <laughs> you're something else. Even when you're cornered, you're still attempting to sniff out my weakness. What's your family situation? Why would you care about something like that? Because I already know intimidation and torture won't get you to talk. Therefore, I think it will be beneficial for both of us to patiently build up some trust. If I talk, will you let me go? For tonight, yes. Nana, look, I really like you. Five years ago, I killed all my peers without getting to know them first. As I'm sure you're aware, all murderers must possess the one key quality of being able to dehumanize other people. I don't want you to force me to make the same mistakes again. I had a mom and dad, and a much older brother, apparently. Why do you say apparently? Because I don't remember. My brother left home when I was still very young. I have no memory of it. And what about your parents? My father worked in a talented related department in the Ministry of General Affairs. My mother was a kindergarten teacher. Both dead now. They were murdered. By whom? A diabolical monster. It was an enemy of humanity. Considering how traumatic that sounds, it's odd that you speak without emotion. It's in the past, so it's out of my hands. We're only human, after all. What can we do? It wouldn't be right to turn back time or raise the dead. These enemies of humanity you speak of, I don't suppose you're referring to the talented, are you? <laughs> Before you drift off to Dreamland, I hope you'll allow me to give you some free advice in good faith. This island is full of children whose powers have turned them into arrogant, entitled twits. On top of that, the adults here don't teach them how to handle failure or frustration, so in a way, bad behavior is inevitable. Whenever the bodies start piling up... The psychopaths come out of the woodwork. Be careful. You may not be the only murderer on this island. Michiru? Oh, sweet Nana! I've been so worried about you! But what am I doing here? Mama, I heard something go bump in the night, and I looked out and there you were, playing unconscious outside. Tachibana really carry me all the way back here? So were you attacked by the enemies of humanity? Uh, yeah, that's right. Early this morning, before it was time to go to class, I randomly got really sleepy. When I woke up, it was already dark. Something seemed off about the whole thing. What do you mean? You were in class today. <gasps> I'm scared because I think some kind of imposter went to school in my place! Yeah, I know because I went after that imposter and almost got myself killed. <gasps> Thanks for your help, Michiru. You were up all night taking care of me, weren't you? I'm just glad you're okay! <laughs> yeah, perfect example of why I'm keeping Michiru alive. I can't get over what a strong person you are. First you lost Nakajima, and then Yuka after that. And yet you're still fighting the good fight. I am the class leader. I know, but what gives you the will to carry on? Don't they scare you? The enemies of humanity? Those villains don't scare me. Huh? Uh, <sighs> Damn, I slipped. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> mm. If you want to know the truth, 
my parents were both killed by the enemies of humanity. So, while a part of me is scared, a much bigger part of me is determined to defeat them. After so many years, I no longer feel resentment or sadness, but still. I should make personal stories like this as relatable as possible. That way, when I act recklessly, the others will assume it's because of my noble vendetta. <laughs> I know you meant well. I'm gonna go wash my face! anything. I'm always here to listen and help. You've been fighting so hard ever since the first day you transferred here. Like last night. Didn't you say you almost died? But today you're back at it. Wow. It must be hard in this world alone. So I'd love to help if you're okay with that. The short version is, one night, a burglar broke into our house. When I woke up the next morning, my parents were already dead. Burglar? Was this burglar an enemy of humanity? Yeah, well, let's just say it was disguised as a human. That definitely explains why you're so determined. Maybe too determined. Koya's actually convinced I'm a serial killer. <sighs> what an evil burglar. Now I get it. I mean, that must be why you act so reckless sometimes. You really are a wonderful person, Michiru. I'm tempted to give her a pass. But she must have a dark side. Just like Yuka. <laughs> <sighs> if I'm honest, I think the real evil one was me, not the burglar. Huh? Both of my parents are dead now. And it's completely my fault. Mm. How though? Forgive me. I'm afraid my back is still in a lot of pain. Oh, sorry! Sunikichi died of natural causes, but these seem like murder. Doesn't that scare you at all? That's why I've decided to cancel classes till the next supply boat comes. We'll have to wait and see what the higher-ups say, and then... The next time you get those higher-ups on the phone, I want you to come get me. I'm going to tell them everything. You got that? Hey, you're crossing the line here. Who do you think you are? I'm the teacher, kid. Tell us, Nana. Do you think it's possible you forgot to bolt your window on the night it happened? I don't know. I always check to make sure everything's locked before my bedtime. I knew my daddy would get mad at me if I forgot to. You're certain the burglar entered through the child's open window, though, right? Isn't that on the report? <gasps> What's wrong with you? She's sitting right here. <gasps> First, I let myself confess too much to Michiru. And now I'm having unwelcome flashbacks. <gasps> Michiru, what's wrong? Huh? Oh, it's nothing. Don't worry about me. Are you feeling sick? I'm totally fine. I guess I'm just a little sad, that's all. If only I'd trained harder, maybe I could have saved them. She said that utilizing her power shortens her lifespan. Her symptoms might have something to do with that. But if she insists she's okay, I'll let her be. Okay. What should my next move be? 
Unlike previously, there don't seem to be any talented hot on my tail, so that's a welcome improvement. Scratch that. There's still this weirdo. I'm so pleased to see you're healed up and doing so well. I don't get it, though. Because if you were going to save my life anyway, then you could have just healed me yourself with her talent. You mean you wanted me to lick your body? Hmm, a tempting offer, to be sure. But Michiru's regenerative power is like an angel's touch. An impressionist like me might die from attempting to mimic such a feat. In other words, you have full access to the abilities of the talented you turn into. But the price you pay is that you also suffer their weaknesses. Do I have that about right? Well, now you know one of my vulnerabilities. Does that satisfy you? I'd be a lot more satisfied if you returned my cell phone. Did you bring it back with you? That's fair enough. I'll give it back to you if you let me see into another part of your soul. Hey, Nana? Do you have a couple minutes to talk? I'm so sorry to bother you at night, but I thought I should check in and see how your back was feeling. Oh, it feels good as new. Could I come in for a minute? All these deaths are making me feel kind of uneasy. Sure, okay. Sounds good to me. <gasps> I thought I heard you talking to someone, but it was just the kitty. <clears throat> hey, you know what? I think this is the first time I've ever come over to see your room. Yeah, you're the first visitor I've had. <gasps> What's come over her? Did she pick up on something? Seems unlikely in her case. You sure do keep your room tidy. I mean, this looks to me like the kind of room only a really smart person would have. Hmm... Have you always been the type to keep your room super neat? I've just heard your inner voice speaking. Uh, so the reason you came here tonight was to ask more questions about my childhood, uh, huh? You're right, I'm sorry. I just couldn't get what you said out of my head. How you feel like your parents' deaths were your fault. I keep wondering why. Sorry, I guess that was pretty cryptic of me. You're usually so cheerful, but it's almost like I saw a different side of you this morning. Look, I would tell you, but I'm afraid it might make you hate me. Mm. What? Are you kidding me? I could never hate you! The only thing I want in the whole world is to help! Oh? Huh? Kissy, Kitty's interested in hearing your story too! Oh, I have no doubt he is. <sighs> There's not much to tell. I was your typical little girl. Were you the kind of kid who grew up playing house and making up stories with dolls and stuff? No, when I was a child, I always preferred to play games. You mean like video games? No, more like shogi, go, and chess. Every birthday, my parents would buy me a new set, so I definitely got a lot of practice in. Wow, that's really old school. Did any of your friends like playing those kinds of games? No, I played alone. Whenever I played with the boys at school, they'd end up throwing fits and refusing to ever go up against me again. Ideally, I would have loved to take up poker or mahjong too, but they can't be played solo, so I had to abandon them. Once, I even attempted to invent my own personal game using custom tiles. For a solo game, I certainly went to some extreme lengths creating it. Oh yeah, just your typical little girl. Definitely. I had a horrible habit of not cleaning up my games. As you can imagine, my room was always a total disaster. The floor was constantly littered with boards and shogi and chess pieces. There was almost no room to walk in that mess. Would it be accurate to say you were kind of the obsessive type? Yeah. I was pretty obsessed with manga, too. That's what happened that night. What night do you mean? When... my parents were killed. I was up late playing games by myself, as usual, and I lost track of the time. Near midnight, I waited until my parents went to bed, and then I snuck out my window. You snuck out your window? But why, though? Where were you going? To the convenience store. The magazine that ran this manga I loved was always delivered there first. I'd often sneak out at night to run to the store, Coins jingling in my pocket the whole way. Okay, don't get me wrong. I mean, I already sort of knew you were a night owl. But you shouldn't have gone out by yourself like that. It's just way too dangerous. When I got home, I read the manga from start to finish. And then I went to bed still in my clothes. Needless to say, I was being sloppy. Which is why 
I ended up forgetting to lock my window. And forgetting was a bad thing? I overheard the police talking later. They confirmed it. The burglar had entered the house through my bedroom. So stupid, right? The killer probably decided to scout out our house when they kept seeing a little girl alone on the street at night. They most likely noticed our house wasn't secure and realized it was the perfect target. My parents often said things like, clean up your room and make sure your window is locked before you go to bed. And I'd groan and agree. But of course I didn't listen to them. I cared more about games or the next plot twist in my manga. I was pathetic. When I woke up, it struck me that the rest of the house seemed awfully quiet. On a normal day, my dad would have been watching the news on TV, and my mom was supposed to be in the kitchen at that moment, cooking breakfast. But instead of smelling breakfast, I smelled blood and found a severed head on the table. So, that's it. That's why it's my fault. If only, if only I had it. I'm coming in. Yoya, when will you learn that this is the girls' dorm? Tell me, kid, were you here with Inukai the whole night? Uh, yeah, I was. Isn't that right, Michiru? Yeah, that's true. I watched her sleep. You better come with me. What the heck happened? It can't be. Oh, look, he's back. <laughs> You didn't let anyone in his room, right? Uh, no. I did just as you said. I waited for you to come back. As you can plainly see, we have another dead body. What do we do, leader? I didn't kill him. There really is another murderer besides me? Seriously? Okay. The victim's name is Ryuji Ishii. I confirmed it before Hidagi got here. A quick examination. His throat was slashed open and there was a deep stab wound on his back as well. So, Moguo, what were you up to last night? What? Who, me? I'm asking because your room is next door to the crime scene. Did you not hear anything? Nah, uh, cause I was hanging out with these guys last night. Yeah, he was. And he was giving us a much needed pep talk. Oh? Sure, I delivered a nice inspirational speech. He started just after the funeral. It was five hours. Yeah, we were kneeling and listening the whole time. Who is this? The infamous Moguo Vanity Hour? Let me get this straight. You are so drunk on the sound of your own voice that you missed the murder next door? Mm, yep, sorry. <sighs> what about you guys? Uh -huh. Did you hear anything through the wall? Let's see, um... I was half asleep. <laughs> Not me! I was totally engrossed in Moguo's incredible speech! Still, if they were so close by... It reasons Ryuji was probably killed afterwards. You three, what are your talents? Uh, wait a minute! You don't suspect them, do you? It's possible that the four of you are all in on the crime and you've come up with an alibi to save your backs. What the? Moguo! Uh. Toya gets theories. What you have to do is let him play them out till the end. Well, if you say so. Uh, cool, I'll start. <gasps> Hiragi. Moguo is a hottie. Huh? Hmm. Whoa! 
Oh, shucks, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> Look who is a hottie. So, anyway, once I activate it, I have to repeat the last thing I said or it will just keep going. Dead ringer for Hiragi's voice. So in theory, you could mimic our stab victim as well, couldn't you? Uh, yeah. Okay, you're up next. Mm, uh, wait, you mean me? Sorry I'm like this. My stomach is killing me. I'm guessing it's all due to seeing that dead body. Stop babbling, talent. Uh, but I just... <laughs> Give me a minute. Uh, hey, are you okay? Uh, has someone been in the restroom this whole time? Nope, sorry. I'm afraid that was me. This guy, he can do astral travel. Yup. Whenever I panic, my mind just slips out of my body. So I went to the bathroom, but nothing came out. I mean, I was astral, so nothing could come out, you know? And on that note, can I please go to the toilet for reals now? Man, give him a break! Dude's got a lot of diarrhea! Fine, go. Next up. <laughs> Awaken. Magnetics! I can turn my body into a magnet. Oh, so does that mean you can draw two metallic objects together? Or is it that you can do the whole splitting apart part? Oh man, good question, but I don't have a clue yet. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Which means you can theoretically control knives and such, correct? Wait, are you certain that everything happened last night? Could the murder have taken place before? No way. Because last night, Ryuji Ishii was at the mass funeral. Then this morning, when his girlfriend showed up so they could walk to school together, she found him here, already dead. That right, Fuko Sorano. Pardon the late introduction. As he said, my name is Fuko Sorano. And the late Ryuji Ishii and I, we've actually been dating each other for the past several years now. Yeah, we all knew that. Hold on, our school break has already begun. So why did you decide to go pick him up? Habit, I guess. It was a daily ritual. So... How about if you show us your talent? Uh, well, I... I'm sorry, but you found the body first, kid. You were also very deeply connected to him. If you keep secrets from us, that will only make things harder. Come with me. I need to be outside. It's a talent you can't use in here? I have no desire to accidentally hurt any of you. I can channel the atmosphere, then utilize it for offensive attacks. All right then, hit me with your best shot. No, I can't. Don't worry, even if I'm ripped to pieces, I won't die. Uh, yes, but... Aim right here. Um, let's go watch from a safe distance. Uh, very well. And now... Brace yourself! Thinking we can classify your attack akin to an industrial jet. But to think that you can concentrate that much atmospheric pressure, your power's ridiculous. Oh, you think so? Look who's talking, buddy! You were so concerned about accidentally hurting people. But actually, you've got some pretty impressive aim there. I'd prefer to be safe than sorry. I can't seem to harness my powers in a stuffy room. Ventilation is key to my aim. Ventilation, huh? Right. His, His window, window was, was open. open. I, I remember, remember that perfectly. perfectly. Hey, Onodera! Oh. I've got the higher-ups on the phone! Hurry, they won't hold forever! Really? It's a crisis, right? I asked him to make the call so I could complain to whoever's in charge. You're wasting your time. We'll finish later. Understood. Ryuji might have been killed as he was trying to escape out the window. 
there are still a lot of unknowns. Thankfully, drawing the truth out of Fuko is Kyoya's job. Hey, what's wrong? Uh, nothing. Come to think of it, I noticed you looking a bit troubled this morning, too. Why exactly are you investigating the crime scene? Because I'm looking for traces of the enemies of humanity, of course. You're so determined. Something's off here. Did she maybe find incriminating evidence in my room last night? Or is she simply exhausted? Maybe feeling sick from seeing that gruesome dead body? That would make sense. Hey, um, Nana? Uh-huh? This is gonna sound weird, but... After we graduate and defeat the enemies of humanity, what do you think you want to do with your life? I don't know. Go to college in the city, I guess. What about you? When I graduate, I kinda wanna train to be a doctor. Think about it. My power is useless against illness or poison. Uh-huh. Luckily, my dad's a doctor. So I've studied a little medicine with him when I've had the time. What I want more than anything is to go to medical school. That's a great idea. I hope we defeat the enemies of humanity soon. Then it'll happen. Thanks for saying that. I'm so glad I decided to confide in you. Maybe I'm overthinking it. She's probably just worried about her future, given the multiple murders. Oh, hey! I just had the best thought! What would you think of living in my town after we graduate? You want me to move there? Of course! We've got lots of affordable apartments for students, and we'd have such a good time! So I was thinking that maybe you could go to college from there. Or maybe you could always just come live with me and my parents instead! Are you serious? Because I can't tell. All I can say is, I know I'd feel a lot more secure having you around. That does sound nice. You're lucky to have such a warm, rich family. Oh yeah, for sure. My mom and dad are both super nice. I'm positive they'll welcome you with open arms. I told you about my parents' death like last night. So I'm gonna need you to back off. <gasps> Why did I let myself get emotional like that? Stupid. I was right. Michiru is acting off. Suddenly she's bringing up the future and caring about my well-being? If she has an ulterior motive, worst case scenario, she's discovered my crimes but is too scared to confront me about them. So instead, she's trying to draw the info out in a sneakier way. Hiragi, it's your teacher. Yeah? Inukai asked me to bring this by. She says your uniform got ripped up? <laughs> oh yeah, thanks so much. The poison bottle. I'm missing the poison I used to try to kill Jin. I know I put it in my pocket afterwards, but I lost it. It's Michiru. After she healed me and changed my clothes, she found the bottle. And it happened right after Kaori's murder. Also, if she really does want to become a doctor, then it wouldn't be surprising if she'd already studied poisons to some extent. It makes sense. Crap. What if she gave that poison to Kyoya? What then? Hey, Hiragi. Inukai just came by to see me. That was interesting. What's up, kid? Are you and Inukai fighting or what? She sounded like she wanted to talk to me about you, but backed off. Never got to the point. She suddenly said never mind and beat it. Does this mean she's conflicted about whether or not to tell Kyoya about me? Well, whatever. I'm about to go see Fuko Sorano. You should come. Sure. Oh, wait. Onodera? Someone's coming from HQ. I guess whatever you told the authorities must have worked and finally convinced them. That's good. Thank you for letting me have my way. The authorities are coming? Before I lose control of the situation, I'd better kill off as many of them as I can. Sorry to ask while you were in mourning, but what did you do right after the funeral the other evening? Uh, I was reading by myself. Uh, 
But later that night, a friend came by my room to visit me, and we ended up hanging out until dawn. Can you be more specific? I think she got here before midnight. By the way, do you know if your boyfriend happened to be an early riser? His alarm clock was set to go off at 5 a.m. Yes. I think Ryuji recently took up jogging in the morning because he was trying to lose some weight. He would always be fast asleep by 11 p.m., at least I'm pretty sure. Hold on, why do you keep doubting yourself? Weren't you guys dating? Well, we had drifted apart recently. Maybe he was getting bored with me? That would make sense. We've been together ever since we were little kids. He was a pretty popular guy, always cracking jokes. In fact, I'd say he had even more games than that ice wielder. Okay, thanks. The gist of your story is that you were with a friend all night, huh? I'll see if that checks out. Ignore him. Please know that I believe you. Hiroki, I need help. Please, help me avenge Ryuji. We'll beat the enemies. Just the two of us. <laughs> so, was she lying? Uh, Why the heck do you think I brought you along with me in the first place? I... Uh, I can't get caught in a lie later. Right, sorry. Guess I wasn't focused for a minute there. But, um, I really don't think she could have done this to him. Why not? Well, first of all, the funeral ended at 7 p.m., right? And right after that, Mogowo was apparently giving some kind of pep talk in his room, which is right next to the victims. This seems to have lasted for about five hours, so it stands to reason that if the murder happened during that time, someone next door would have heard it. Which means the murder must have happened after Mogo's pep talk, or in other words, after midnight. There's no getting around it. However, according to Fuko, she had a friend over and they hung out from midnight all the way until morning. If that's true, doesn't it give her a pretty solid alibi? I think he was killed during Mogo's rant. So no, she's not in the clear yet. Huh? There were quite a few bugs camping out in his room, lured in by the light, I assume. He noticed too. When the body was discovered this morning, the window was still standing open and all of the lights were turned on. So the question is, how long was the room left in this state? According to Fuko, the deceased usually went to bed at 11. I also heard bugs made him squeamish, but even if they hadn't, most people would still close the window and turn out the lights before bed. I see. So you're saying he was murdered before he went to bed? But why was the window not closed? The killer could have used their talent to open it. Okay, but couldn't the killer have broken in after midnight? Why would the killer turn on the light to kill if they're trying not to get caught? Well, then maybe Ryuji heard something and woke up, so he turned on the light in order to fight the killer. Then he tried to escape out the window. The problem is Ryuji's talent was making himself extremely small. For instance, here's a good story. Once, one of his jokes apparently went too far, and he ended up offending Fuko. She chased him all over the school in a rage, but she was never able to catch him. Story goes, later, as Fuko was gasping for breath, Ryuji popped out of her pocket. Sorry, babe. Really? That's unbelievable! You see the problem? He could have shrunk down to the size of a hair if he wanted to. If he noticed someone broke in, turning on the light to escape out the window wouldn't have been his first choice. Why would it? Besides, the killer would have felt no obligation to make his fight with Ryuji a fair one. They could have done something else, like poison a contact lens. The point is, killing Ryuji without a sneak attack would be practically impossible, but Fuko would have known that and could have surprised him. So you're saying you still suspect her? You saw her power, didn't you? It would explain the messy room, that's for sure. But during that time, next door... Judging by the body, Ryuji's throat was slit first, right off the bat. They wanted to prevent him from screaming. This proves our killer was careful about being quiet. It could very well be that the ridiculous foursome next door just happened not to hear it. He's unraveling this case with more skill than I imagined. 
It's only a matter of time. See you later. If I have any further insight about a motive, I'll question Fuko. Okay, sure, but please be gentle with her. Well, I guess I'll work on Michido. Michido? I'm coming in. Michiru's in the shower? Good. I'll search her room for clues. If I find my poison, then I'll deal with it. It's not here. Where did you hide it? I should just ask her about it directly. Michiru's been acting off today. What was it she was going to tell Kyoya? Her diary? That's right. She was writing in here the morning after Jin almost killed me. You should apologize to Nana right now! But I would never hate you! I only want to help you, Nana! Knowing Michiru, she probably writes down everything as it happens, like a play-by-play. -play. If she ever adds up what she's seen, it'll basically prove I'm a killer. Nana saved me from everyone. She's so brave, kind, and heroic. I can't believe Nana and I are sharing a secret. I feel so honored. I guess she must trust me. This what you're looking for, Nana? How disappointing that you suspected Michiru. So, how do you feel after reading her diary? She's overflowing with trust and goodwill for her idol. What exactly are you playing at here? I'm just trying to reach whoever has groomed you into a serial killer. Because I'd like to take them out to lunch. So you're not giving it to Kyoya? Oh, you know how Knox and field investigators will very often butt heads? Remember what I said. I'm going to be letting you swim for a while. Well then, I should be taking off. The woodland animals have been pretty restless since last night's murder. I won't see you for a while, so make sure to take good care of Michiru in my absence. Wait, hasn't she been in the shower an awfully long time? <laughs> Pulse is weak, and her fever is high. <coughs> she seems dehydrated, too. If she doesn't get help soon, her life might actually be in danger. How'd she end up like this? <coughs> it's fine. I don't have to save her. I only need to help her regain consciousness so I can ask about what happened. I still don't know why she's been acting so strange since yesterday. Excuse me, sir. Do you have a sec? Uh -huh. Michiru has come down with a high fever. The... Oh no, that's awful. Isn't there a doctor here on the island? I remember the school pamphlet mentioned one when I got here. Someone should be around in case the students get sick, right? Yeah, but unfortunately the doctor is currently back at HQ. Now that you mention it, did all the other teachers leave the island too? They just went back to the faculty dorms early. And this honestly doesn't have anything at all to do with the murders. So please don't worry. <laughs> this is probably my fault. This might sound strange coming from your teacher, but maybe uh, you should ask Onodera for help. No can do. 
kind of busy right now. Are you examining Ryuji's body? I'm doing an autopsy to pinpoint a rough time of death. Well, I'm trying to find where I can get some medicine. Michiru has a high fever, and she seems awfully nauseous, too. I have meds. What do you need? I'm not really sure what's wrong with her, but I'd like to try something like acetaminophen. Hmm. <laughs> you sure know your stuff. I mean, it's pretty common knowledge. If you say so. I'll be back. <laughs> Damn it. What's next? I need to get water and some food with salt and sugar, plus something nutritious like vegetables or eggs. Excuse me? Anybody there? Could you please let me in? No response. I could always come back in the morning. <laughs> Talented always push their luck. They use shortcuts to avoid hard work, turn back time. I wonder if one day she'll be able to bring back the dead. Sorry I took so long. What's her condition? I'm not really sure. What do you think? I don't know. But given her symptoms, it doesn't seem like a bacterial infection. It'd be better if she went to a hospital. For now, keep calling out to her once in a while. The way she goes in and out worries me. Right. Hey, Michiru! Wake up! By the way, the room looks a bit messy. <laughs> oh, that was my fault. I was looking for a change of clothes for her. You say that, but no one keeps clothes in their desk drawers. Michiru, can you hear me? When she came to my room before, she clearly had something on her mind. I sensed there was tension between these two. I'd hoped it was because she noticed Hiragi's oh, crimes, but I guess I was wrong. Look what you did. Being so high maintenance. I wasted my entire day taking care of you. Kyoya's attention right now is on the current murder case. This should be my chance to strike. So come on, wake up. That's scary, man. Is she's throat was all slit and stuff? It was a clean horizontal cut that went from his left to his right. There was also a gaping stab wound in his back. That reminds me of something. It's just like those dead dogs and rabbits I've been seeing around school. Oh? Their throats were cut too. It was sick. You think the same guy did it? I have my own question for you. How are you guys able to listen to Mogwo for five straight hours? We were barely hanging on. Our legs fell asleep from sitting on the floor too long, and Mogwo's voice was so loud we all had headaches the whole time. Would you say he was so loud that he could have been heard in the next room over? Yeah. Ishii even complained a few times. I'm surprised you put up with him. He's loud, but there are times when he can be cool too. Wait, can you not dump trash on my floor? I was just curious about what kind of accessories are currently in style for men. Don't mind me. Uh, I do mind. You can't I suppose finding the murder weapon in the permission. trash would be too Who convenient. That? That's a relief. It looks like her fever's gone down too. She doesn't seem nauseous anymore either. <laughs> Why am I relieved? You need something? Well, I was wondering if there were any further developments in the case. Kyoya's been handling it, so I wouldn't know. I've been taking care of Michiru and haven't left her side. If you don't mind me asking, how are her injuries? Her injuries? What made you think that Michiru was hurt? Oh, well, I just assumed that her condition was connected to what happened with Ryuji, that's all. I get it. You must still be in shock and can't get him out of your head, right? What about you? How are you feeling? You're starting to look rather pale. I hope you've at least eaten something today. If you're fine with it, why don't you allow me to watch over Miss Inukai for a few hours? You could use that time to get some rest. No thanks. But it's not wise to risk your own health in the pursuit of helping her. 
Same applies to you. Your boyfriend just died, didn't he? Take time to process that trauma. I understand. Good luck. I hope she feels better soon. One possibility is that Michiru has info on Ryuji's murder, and Fuku came here to try and silence her. If that's true, then I need to keep an eye on Michiru. No, this doesn't make sense. I don't know what's going on. Open your eyes. Michiru, time to get up. Looks like you're finally awake. Nana, what? You collapsed while you were in the shower. Does that mean that you were the one who found me? Wait, earlier. I came across an injured cat and was healing it. A cat? As I was going back to my room, two of them were waiting for me. One had a horrible cut on his neck, and the other kept meowing at me. Almost as if he were begging for me to help save his injured friend. A cat? Was that Tachibana? Luckily, I was able to heal the cat in time, and the two of them pranced out of my room. Then I got really cold, so I decided to take a shower. But my memory begins to fade after that. What a relief. I was worried you got attacked. You think you fainted from exhaustion after using your powers? That's probably why. There's something else that I've been wondering. I noticed you've been looking worried these past few days. Is it because you haven't been feeling all that well? Oh. Uh, I think that might be why. I have been feeling kind of dizzy now that you mention it. Is that the reason why you paid a visit to Kyoya's room? Oh, that? I was just asking him if he had any medicine that could help. Is that all? Great. It's completely unrelated to the murder. I was freaked out for nothing. Anyway, you should stay in bed for a while. Nana, you're hurt. <laughs> Did you forget that using your powers shortens your life? Was fainting not enough of a reminder? You passed out for an entire day! But I wanted to help. Sorry. <laughs> Were you taking care of me while I was out the whole time? <laughs> if you have enough luxury to worry about other people, then you should be fine. You don't seem feverish anymore. You'll feel even better if you get cleaned up. Your hair is an absolute mess. Uh, but your hair is messed too, Nana. Uh, 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 hold on! When did it get so tangled? I swear it wasn't like this earlier! <laughs> what happened? <laughs> hey, you better not be laughing at me! Uh, no, I'm really not! It's just, you're always so well put together, it's kind of funny seeing you like this. I guess everyone has their dorky moments. <laughs> <laughs> Look in the mirror before you call me dorky! Alright, if that's how you're gonna be, let me fix your hair! <laughs> <laughs> Before you scamper off, humor me. I don't care who you plan on killing after Ryuji Ishii, and I won't chastise you. I'm well aware that I'm not really one to talk. However, the fact is, I'm an animal lover. So much so that I even brought one of the cats you maimed to Michiru for healing. I was desperate enough to use her to save him, despite knowing it would shorten her life. I'm warning you to stop hurting these animals. We are the same, after all. Non-human, I mean. Lower life forms. I couldn't find any useful information in Nana's phone. It was set so that it couldn't make outgoing calls. So I doubt the person she tried to contact hung up on her. It was probably a meaningless number she dialed. And then there are these potential kill counts. They appear to be arbitrary numbers as well, but not useless. Sometimes people can be tricked into believing a stone is a diamond. Who was it who sold none of this rock, convincing her it was a gem? And what are they up to now? I believe we've let this go on long enough. According to our reports, Nana Hiragi has killed five or six people in total. Quite impressive, considering she's a little girl. I assume she would give up on her first kill and run back with her tail between her legs, delaying the plan. You have trained her beautifully, Mr. Tsuruoka. That aside, we received a distress call from one of the island faculty yesterday. 
Are you still going to inspect the situation personally? Of course I am. Nana is like family to me after all. Hey, you running errands for Moguo? Huh? Oh, hey there. And yeah, he asked me to go buy him a drink. If I'm not mistaken, you and the murder victim were friends, right? Uh, yeah. He invited me to mixers and helped me meet girls. Do you know if Ishii was seeing anyone else besides Fuko Sorano? No, of course he wasn't. He was always a total gentleman. The last time he set up a mixer for us, he said something like... I'll pass. You guys have fun without me. Aw, oh, come on. You should totally hang. I'd really rather be cuddling with Fuko. Oh. <sighs> He's a real man's man. Nobody's as great as he is. He's nice, smart, and funny. Or he was. He sure was nice. And smart. And funny. Um. Wow, this soup you made for me is super duper delicious! You really think so? Uh, well actually, it might be a little bit too salty. Oh, that's such a shame. That fever must have messed up your sense of taste. Uh, <laughs> I'm only kidding. My bad. Cooking's not really my thing. Uh, <laughs> she continues to waste more of my time. I should make Fuku my next target. She'd be an easy kill since I could pass it off as suicide. Where are you going? I thought it was about time for me to be a good leader and check up on everyone. If you don't mind, would it be okay if you stayed longer? I still don't completely understand why I passed out all of a sudden before, so I'd appreciate the company. I know! We could play some games! Have some fun to pass the time! I have a shoji set we could use. That sounds good. Let me just take a shower first. That's enough. I need to stop having these feelings for Michiru. What would Soroka do if he saw how I've been acting these past few days? I don't even want to think about it. <sighs> Say, weird question. How can you be such a good person all the time? A what? It's been on my mind for a while now. It started when I saw Takanashi constantly bullying you, but you were still so desperate to save her when she died. That's because... I think everybody deserves to be saved, no matter who they are. Would you tell me about Hitomi? Uh, how did you... I heard that name from your inner voice. Oh, that makes sense. Hitomi saved my life. I owe her everything. I'd love to hear the whole story. Why not? I have to warn you, it's a long one. I have the time. Before I came to the island, I think it was three years ago? There was this boy in my class who scraped his leg, so I decided to help him out and used my talent to heal his injury. Then for some reason, I guess people thought what I did was inappropriate. At least the other girls did. Did you hear that story? Michiru licked Takashi's leg. That's so gross. Those talented think they can do whatever they want. She should just go to war already. What are we doing today? Let's go hit the usual hangout. Why am I like this? I wish I wasn't a talented. Mm. Oh. Oh, it's a puppy. Oh. Hey, what are you doing? There she was, Hitomi Hosokawa. She was a classmate at the time. Everybody was scared of her. I heard people say she even threatened to beat up one of the boys before then. That's why, understandably, my first instinct was to turn and run for it. Wait, hold on a second. Uh, Would you just relax? I just want to know if you saved that little dog or not. For real? That's an awesome talent you've got! Imagine all the people you could help! Apparently, Hitomi was fond of that particular puppy. So after that, she would start coming to my rescue a lot. 
She was always so passionate about helping me. Hey! I heard you and your friends were talking crap about Michiru! Michiru, let's have lunch together! Huh? She used to be one of those students who had ditched school a lot, but she started showing up to class to see me. So you see, my mom's been feeling pretty sick for the last couple days now. Do you think that you could heal her? I'm sorry, but my talent can't heal sickness. There has to be some physical injury for me to help. That's how it works, huh? Man, rules can be confusing. But still, I think your power is awesome. There are so many people out there, waiting for you to save them. So chin up, okay? Have some more self-confidence. You promise? Hitomi gave me the push I needed to do more. After she said that, I started healing lots of people. I helped out at my dad's hospital, and I even went to a research facility in a neighboring town. Unfortunately, Hitomi and I grew further apart. She never had the best school attendance anyway, and I got a lot busier with my own work. But we did meet again, unexpectedly. After I healed a patient who was critically injured, I kind of fainted on the spot. That was how I discovered the limits of my powers and that using them drains my own life force. So that time, it was my turn to be brought in as the patient. Hey! Wait, Hitomi? What are you doing here? Plot twist, I've been staying here the entire time. And this mop? A wig and hat combo! It turns out, Hitomi had terminal cancer. She was diagnosed before we even met. She wasn't absent from school because she was ditching. She was out sick. You showed up at school for me? And instead of resting and taking care of yourself, you were protecting me from bullies? You did all of that and still went to chemo? Come on, don't be silly. You know how they say that eating junk food is bad for you and will make you die young? It's the same idea. It's okay to live little, even if it's not healthy. Right back at ya. Weren't you the one who saved my dog? And you didn't even know me. That's just plain heroic. What are you talking about? You're the one who's a hero! Listen, I'm not great at this touchy-feely stuff. All I know is, I want to help people in need. And that makes me strong. I'm glad you're here. And I'm happy I got to see you again. You might think I'm cool and stuff now, but when I'm all alone at night, <laughs> I'm a baby. Soon after that, Hitomi passed away. My talent was completely useless when someone I cared about needed it the most. So... That's why... I push myself! I'll be going. What is this? I thought I told you to clean your room, Nana. But I did! I... I didn't make this mess! Listen, I know your father helped us out of a bind, but don't assume we're gonna give you special treatment, because that ain't happening. I'm sorry. Yeah, you should be. Did you even close the window? <laughs> Jeez, you haven't learned anything. No double murder for me, thanks. But... I didn't kill Daddy and Mommy. It wasn't me. It wasn't my fault. Oh, it was, though. You killed your parents, Nana. Accept it. Uh, hey. Sorry to bother you, but I've had something on my mind for a while now. I figured it'd be best to ask you about it. But first, I'm sorry, because I need to admit I lied to you this morning. I was worried that if I were to randomly bring up the subject again, you might get upset with me. So the real reason I went to see Kyoya was... I needed someone to help me sort out my jumbled thoughts. 
Oh, but I didn't tell him anything. I started to, but then I worried I'd give away that I was talking about you. So she did find my behavior suspicious. Please, Nana. I want you to search through your memories, okay? Let's see. It was morning! Sorry, I should have said. I'm talking about the moment when you found your parents dead in the living room. <laughs> Please, try to remember. We'll start at the beginning. When you came out of your room that morning, you wondered why the house was quiet. Did you happen to step on anything on your way out of your room? Do you remember hurting the soles of your feet or anything like that? No, I didn't. Please, this is an important fact! The floor was spotless. <laughs> there it is! I knew it! It really wasn't your fault then! Your room was always super messy, right? You couldn't walk around without stepping on something! If you were up late playing games the night before, that means your floor would have been littered with a bunch of game pieces and stuff, wouldn't it? But... When I woke up the next morning, the room was put together. So... That means it had to be... Your parents must have cleaned your room in the middle of the night! Wait, you don't know that! I mean, I was shaken up by my parents' murder. So it's very possible that I might have just not noticed that I'd stepped on my games. I guess so, but... Wouldn't that mess up the order of events that day then? Because it doesn't make sense that you'd be shaken up or distracted until after you left your bedroom and found your parents lying dead on the table, isn't that right? Even if that's true, there's no guarantee that they did lock my window! I guess so, but they were always on your case about making sure your window was locked, weren't they? So would those same people clean your room and forget to lock it? Cause that doesn't seem likely to me. If your parents were anything like you, I'm sure they were very kind. I have a feeling they were careful to lock your window quietly so as not to wake you, which means... <laughs> it's not impossible. However, even if that's the case, I was still undeniably sloppy and careless. That hasn't changed. <laughs> but I don't care! It still wasn't your fault! <laughs> I remember reading somewhere. When children are faced with tragedy, it's very common for them to blame themselves for whatever might have happened. Please, at least think about it. Because you were only playing. Exactly like any other normal kid. So who was it that actually murdered your parents? Because we know it wasn't you, right? <laughs> That's the reason. This is why Michiru looked upset the last few days. Because she's worried about me. She wants to prove my innocence. Meanwhile, I thought... I suspected she was out to get me. <laughs> Please, stop hating yourself. You have no reason to. No matter what happens, I'll always be on your side, Nana. I'll always be your friend. We're friends? I've never... The supply ship is coming tomorrow, so we can buy some pretty things in the courtyard. Do you want to go shopping together? I don't know. Does someone like me deserve this? Michiru is... my friend. <laughs> hey, what's up? You're spacing out. It's nothing. Uh, I'm gonna go to the restroom. If Michiru is my friend, then maybe I should give her some kind of little present. Like this? I wonder if she'd actually like it. What's up with you, kid? You have a crush on someone, or what? I'm hoping to close in on our killer real soon, and I need your help. What can I do? Truth is, I still don't know the killer's motive. It would make the most sense to capture and question them. That seems extreme. Do you even have enough proof to do that? Not yet. I initially suspected Ryuji might have been unfaithful to Fuko. But as I questioned people, I discovered there was a lot more to the story. The mysterious animal death started around the same time. I understand, but you need evidence. Because if we aggravate the killer, it might drive them to strike again. Very well. 
Although, if we can't deduce their motive, then, that means we won't be able to figure out who the next target is. Too bad we missed that early bird sale on cell phones. What a bummer. I don't need a phone. I get to see you every day anyway. <laughs> I don't know why, but you seem even nicer than usual today. Hey, Michiru. Oh? I got you a little something. Huh? Uh, you got this for me? I did, to study for medical school. Uh, uh, and I promise to use it. Every day. <laughs> You know what's funny? I picked out a present for you, too. Is that a pillow? I had a hard time choosing a gift, but I was worried you haven't been sleeping well. Also, I read in a book somewhere that one of the most effective ways to forget your troubles in a hurry is to try to get a good night's sleep. Well, thank you. I'm guessing I'll probably think of you every time I go to sleep from now on. Oh, well, that makes me feel kind of funny. Listen... I'm sorry I snapped at you and made you feel uncomfortable because of my past. Please, you can tell me anything, and I'll do the same. You know, I sure hope we can defeat the enemies of humanity really soon. more than enough proof now. Michiru... I wonder what she's doing right now. <laughs> Hold on. Didn't you say I wouldn't see you for a while? Yes, but you know cats make their own rules. That is not a successful metaphor. You aren't nearly cute enough to be a cat. Yeah, yeah, very funny, but even cats know how to give gratitude when it's due. Especially... If it involves a sweet girl who healed his wounded feline friend. You want to talk about Michiru? Then talk. I saw something of note. Though it's pretty late, I happened to notice her walking alone on the path that leads to the ocean. I took Moguo's form and asked her what she was doing. Get this, she told me someone asked her to meet them to talk in secret. What? Who? She subtly dodged the question. She strikes me as the type who definitely knows how to keep a secret. Where exactly was she going? She was on her way to the deserted cottage by the sea. Hold on. Why are you telling me this? Why else? I'm trying to seduce you, of course. If you'd consider wearing my collar from now on, I would gladly solve every one of your problems for you. <laughs> if you hurry, it might not be too late. Look for the tall pine by the coast. That's your landmark. I see nothing but red flags. I don't know why, but I have this feeling the killer has lured Michiru into a trap. Which means, even if I do get there on time, I might not be able to help her. I don't even know the killer's talent. I could assemble the class. No, I don't have time to explain everything to them. Hmm. Kill ya! Perfect. Convincing him should be easy. Good evening, Michiru Inukai. I started with dogs and cats. They're beautiful. But when people call something beautiful, don't you kind of want to mess it up? Uh, um, you said you had something important to say? I do. I noticed a cat I cut up the other day was walking around all healed up. I figured it must have been thanks to you. And then, I remembered how beautiful you are. It's surely a sin to slash something so lovely and pure. The thing is, when I mock or ruin something that everyone else praises as pure, the feeling is just incredible. Like I'm expressing my true self. me. Mr. Tsuruka! I need an update. Uh, it's going well, sir. Sounds like you're gasping for breath. Are you hunting down an enemy of humanity as we speak? 
Hiragi? Uh, yes, sir? After your mission is complete, you will be compensated. If I'm not mistaken, I believe you wanted to use that money to start a scholarship fund for kids like you who lost their parents. Rest assured, the wages you've accrued thus far have been deposited into your relative's account, as per your request. Considering how they mistreated you, though, an orphan whose parents were murdered is rather commendable. Everyone here speaks highly of you. I'm honored, sir! Complete your mission. Don't fail us. That's right. She's not my friend. Why did I let myself dream? Let them war amongst themselves, those stupid enemies of humanity. That's an ideal end. I should let the killer roam free. Yes, Michiru be damned. The chase sure is exhilarating, isn't it? Animals and humans, they both totally piss themselves when they run in terror. Even the purest creatures have such impure moments. Oh dear, given up already? You mean Nana Hiragi? I don't think she's coming. Just a hunch. Truth is, I sense an ugly kind of darkness emitting from her soul. Almost as if she's lying 100% of the time. Uh, you take that back! I don't care if you want to hurt or insult me, that's fine! But no, Nana! Don't talk about my friend! What a beautiful speech. Well, time to die now. Sorano was the killer, but there was someone else I should have paid more attention to the whole time. He was right under my nose. His motive was a mystery, though. I should have been more vigilant. The killer pretended to sit there and listen to Moko's endless speech, but all the while, he was slipping out of his body to make his kill. He was able to pass through the bathroom door and flush the toilet, so that means his astral body can both travel through walls and make physical contact with an object. Objects like the one he's holding right now. That knife. This setup was too easy for him. You were the one who opened Ryuji's window. That way, you could still listen to Mokuo's speech. Because if you did, you'd have an alibi. You could also jump back into your body if he addressed you personally. Then, when Ryuji was startled by the window, you took the opportunity to strike. You killed him with a single slash across the neck, in cold blood. <laughs> then, to the strains of Mogua's speech, you passed the suspicion onto Fuko by messing up his room. That right? Rintaro Tsurumigawa! Now, you don't need to answer this, but I always wondered why you didn't speak up when you read my mind. I was right, your soul is an ugly thing to behold. Quick, let me see your back! I'll heal you! No, don't! Hey! Do you mind moving, please? You see, my heart's completely set on killing Inukai. <laughs> oh, and I distract him. Run for it! Hey, that's a pretty good knife. Where'd you find it anyway? On the floor in that deserted cottage. Gorgeous, right? I love it. I sharpen it every day. Oh, sure. But without that blade, you're utterly powerless, aren't you? You're just a little kid with a shiny new toy. High on the power. My, what a dirty mouth you have, Hiragi. Your soul truly is the most hideous thing. Shut up and do it. Go ahead now, slit my helpless throat. You'd love to, right? Who are you? Get back to the dorms! What? No, I can't. I won't go! Listen to me! I know what I'm doing! I've already set the perfect trap for this fool. He can't chase you now! Not until I'm finally dead! <gasps> what? 
What are you talking about? No, no, no! I won't let you do it! I can't let you die for me! Get out of here, you stupid dog! We're not friends, okay? I've known that you were beneath me since day one! You were a dumb lost puppy I could use! All this time, I've done nothing but manipulate you! Don't you see? I'm sick the same way that he is! Whiny little victims like you disgust me! <laughs> so, what's this trap? Oh, please. You're a complete coward, aren't you? You gonna let her get away alive? <laughs> Talk! <laughs> okay. My plan was to let you go on your killing spree. When I got sick of you, I'd eliminate you like the others. I set my trap carefully, waited for my chance to strike. If it wasn't for me, Chido... <gasps> Wait a minute, were you lying? You played me! You little pile of crap! I can't breathe! Stupid Kyoya. Took you long enough. You pants! You moron! Stop it! You were hard to find. Locking yourself in the school bathroom was a smart move. Somebody asked Inukai to meet them? That's right. I think that it was Rentaro Tsurumikawa. I was able to hear his inner voice, and well, let's just say I have no doubt that he is our killer. <laughs> to say I have questions is an understatement. But let's save Inukai first. Sounds good. But I'm gonna need you to do me a favor. Yes, I figured. He can travel in astral form. We don't know how far he can go yet. But neither of us can win a fight against an astral ghost. There's no way. We have to attack his physical form. You're pretty impressive. Ideally, his body would be at the coast near his astral projection, but it's possible that he can send his astral self a lot farther out than that. So you want us to strike from both ends? I have to be the one to save Michiru, no matter what! Hold on. Maybe I should be the one to do that. Oh, wait. I guess both of the missions are pretty dangerous. I know. Whoever attacks his physical body is in for a fierce fight once he returns. He'll protect himself. Wouldn't this be a good time to ask the class for backup? Thing is, would they agree to it if we asked them to? I'm sure a lot of the students are frightened and would rather not get involved. And we don't have any time to debate this! I'd bet they listen if it came from you, though, don't you think? Or not. I can tell you're panicking. I am. That's precisely why I'm asking you for your help. Uh, only because I figured you'd be an easy sell. That's all. <laughs> Glad to know you don't hate me. Good luck. Please keep your head on. When you find Inukai, don't be a hero. Get both of you somewhere safe and fast. I'm so crazy. What the hell have I done? I abandoned my mission, attacked an insane talented without a plan, and got myself butchered. Well, after everything I've done up until now, seems like a fitting way to go. I feel cold. So cold. Dad, Mom. I'm so sorry, but please, hear me out. For the first time in my life, I have a friend. A friend with shaggy hair, just like a little puppy. Yes, her name is Michiru. Huh? What are you doing? You'll be fine. I can do this. No, you're not... I can't speak. I can feel your life flowing back into your body. It's happening! No, don't do it! Stop! You passed out the last time! I'll save you, I swear it! Because you're such a 
good person, Nana! Quit trying! I'm not who you think I am! Uh, uh, Itomi, lend me your power. I'm scared to do this alone. So scared. But I won't be stopped. Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn. 